All right, welcome to Code EXP Pre Hackathon Workshop. Thank you all for joining us on this Monday morning. Um, I'm I'm glad you're here. My name is YJ, and uh, I'll be running the I'll be running this uh, introductory workshop for the next three days. And uh, I just want to emphasize a few things before we start. Okay, so uh, the first thing is this workshop is technically optional. Um, you don't have to sit through the entire thing, but uh, I think it might be educational if you don't, especially if you don't know any React Native. Okay, so that's the first thing. If you don't don't stress about uh, making yourself available for all the workshops, it's not actually part of the the requirements to qualify for Code EXP, but it's strongly recommended. And you know, it's it's a free class, right? It's a free class. You can't say no to that, right? Okay, so if you're free, please do join us. And even if you miss part of it, that's fine too, because this is being recorded and we will post it to YouTube afterwards. All right, we'll post it to YouTube. It will be an unlisted video on our channel and we will put the link on the Discord. Okay, so the first two things. First is it's not strictly required that you are here or, or that you are here throughout the entire three days. It's required for me to be here the three days, I guess. Okay, but uh, for you, not so much. Okay, so even if you miss part of it because you have something on, you can't make it for certain parts of it, that's perfectly fine. You know, uh, don't stress about it. You will still have a chance to qualify for the finals. Okay, so um, so that's one. <clears throat> Next is that it's being recorded. Okay, so um, if you turn on your camera or anything, you might show up in the in the recording. Uh, I do not have a requirement for you to turn on the camera at, of any uh, at any time. Right, feel free to if you want, but just be aware that if you do, you will end up on the recording. Okay, so yeah, uh, I'm I'm perfectly fine talking to a bunch of uh, black boxes with your names on it. Okay, so that's number two. Number two is that we are being recorded. Uh, we will aim to put up the videos as quickly as we can, but uh, more more likely than not, they will only be available on Thursday. Okay, after everything is done. Okay. Um, the third thing I want to point out is that the the class is uh the class material is contiguous in the sense that the days one and two right are continuations of one another. Okay, so uh, what we're doing now. We will, we will assume that you know what we've covered in the morning when you join in the afternoon. And likewise, tomorrow, we'll assume that you know what we've done today. To that end, I will try my very best to make sure that the recordings are up earlier in case some of you, you know, want to join us tomorrow morning but can't make it this afternoon, things like that. All right, I'll try my best. Okay, no promises. Um, but it's okay if you don't get everything the first time round. If you can't, if you uh, if not everything uh, makes sense to you uh, immediately, right? You can always watch the video recordings, and you can always uh, you know get caught up afterwards. Okay, all right. So uh, then what happens on Wednesday? Wednesday stuff is a little bit different. Okay. Um, I would say that the one of the sessions I forgot which morning or afternoon the one about APIs uh is still related, but that's also when we are going to cover a bunch of new stuff which uh, you might not need all the things that you've learned on you know the first two days. Uh, in particular. One of the things that DSTA is doing is that they are providing free AWS credits for you to use. Uh, we'll be introducing you to some AWS related APIs. Okay. Uh, tentatively, I'm looking at Amplify Studio, which is uh, their mobile you know, framework thing, which you can use on the backend. And um, yeah, and maybe we'll dive into like OpenAI and you can try making your ChatGPT app or something like that. Right? Everyone loves a ChatGPT app nowadays. Okay, so that's one of the sessions. The other session is about design and prototyping, which is going to be pretty important because uh, that's got to do with the requirements for the qualifiers. Okay, so that's Wednesday, right? Wednesday is uh, slightly different from the first two days. First two days, you know, I throw as much React Native stuff as you as I can. Okay, uh, if you want, you can follow along. If you if you are unable to at any time, you know, let's say you are watching this on the toilet or whatever, um, don't tell me. Uh, then that's fine, right? You can always watch it later, and you know when you need the information, you can come back and try and try and find the information that you need. Okay, all right. So those are the main things that I do with uh, this this workshop. There are a couple of uh, admin related things as well. I need to go through uh, with regards to Code EXP itself. This Friday is the important one. Okay, if you can't make it for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, the workshops, that's not the worst thing in the world. But Friday is the launch. 
Okay, Friday is the launch and I do hope that at least one group member from each team will join the live stream for that. Okay, uh, on Friday, what's going to happen is that BSTA will be launching the, formally launching the hackathon. And that's when we'll announce things like the theme, the requirements and stuff like that. Okay, you already have a timeline of what's what to expect. It's in the very first email and hopefully in the Discord, I will go and check. Okay, um, you can take a look at the timeline over there and you can actually just uh, kind of figure things out. But on Friday, that's when we'll launch the theme. That's when you know what you're supposed to work on. You'll know what to submit. You'll know how to submit it and various other things. Okay, so Friday is the important thing. Friday is when I need your help to actually log on and attend the opening ceremony. It won't take very long, an hour at the most. You hear from the STA speakers, you hear from, uh, from my colleagues, where we'll tell you a bit more about what to expect in the coming weeks. Okay, so, all right. So I hope that uh, kind of, uh, I hope I managed to get some of the preamble out of the way. Those of you who just joined us, very quick summary, these three days workshop, not a strict requirement for the hackathon, but good to know, okay? Second thing is that it's being recorded, so you can come back and watch it, but I will try my best to get the recording onto Discord as quickly as possible after each session, but no guarantees. There's a chance that I only manage to do everything by Thursday, okay? And uh, finally, the content for the next two days, day one and day two of the workshop are intro to React Native, Day three is when we go through APIs and design and prototyping, all right? The design and prototyping part is especially going to be useful for you because that's going to be very relevant to what you submit to the qualifiers, okay? All right, so I think we have a decent number of people out of those I saw registered. So thank you so much for joining us once again. Let's get started with today's session. Uh, I have a few ground rules to get started on Zoom. We've all done your Zoom calls over the last three years. I'm sure we had tons of fun sitting at home, staring at uh, people give lectures. Uh, let's do the same thing again for the next few days. I have a few re requests. First of all, please keep yourself muted. And that's a very simple thing. Okay, all of you are already muted as far as I know. We might mute you if you accidentally toggle that button. Okay, that's one. Keep yourself muted. Second, if you have questions, okay, if you have questions, I actually ask for you to send them in Discord. Okay, so there is a Zoom chat, right? There is a Zoom chat that's decent and everything, but it doesn't quite persist beyond sessions where we have different sessions for different uh, AM, PM workshops, okay? Uh, I think they recently just introduced that persistent chat after the, after the call is over, but never mind, who cares? All right, we have Discord, and I hope all of you are on the Discord, okay? Please use the Discord for any questions and comments or anything at all. Okay, if you're not sure about anything, right, please join us on the Discord. Let me pull up the Discord so I can show you that real quick on screen. Hang on, now. my Discord is over here. And let me, here's my Discord. Okay, so this is the Discord. Uh, if anyone here right now in the Zoom is not on the Discord, or if you're facing any trouble getting on the Discord, please let us know in the Zoom chat. I guess, right, you can't, you can't chat in the Discord chat if you're not on the Discord chat, right? Okay, so if you're not on the Discord yet, right, please let us know. We will try our best to help you. I have a couple of co-hosts over here, Marcus and Sean. They will be helping me throughout this course. They'll just be, they'll just be like working behind the scenes, like letting people in and, uh, you know, answering questions about, you know, getting on Discord, okay? Um, they'll also be monitoring the Discord as well. So when you're here, all right, I would like you to, don't go to counting, right? Please go to workshop chat and questions, okay? and say hello, right? Oh, don't, don't say hello, right? If you're, if you're there, right, just help me out. Just drop an emoji over, over, at, uh, over at the Discord just to let me know that you have, you have everything down straight. Okay, there we go, right? We have some people who have responded already. Thank you very much, okay? So feel free to use this chat, okay? Use this chat for whatever uh, questions and comments you have, right? Things like, RJ, I don't understand you. Uh, can you slow down? All that you can you can use the slow down stuff inside uh, inside Zoom as well if you really want. Okay, so we will let this chat run wild. Uh, feel free to chat. Don't don't feel don't feel bad. Okay, if you have any questions, oh thank you for the super react. Okay, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, please note that we might answer them in threads. Okay, so that means uh, if I have a question, right? I have a question. Uh, how do you answer me? Okay, so. 
if I have a question, right, one of my uh, one of my co-hosts might actually just reply to you in a thread. So they might actually go and create a thread to reply to you so it doesn't like uh, clog up the main timeline, if you will. Okay. And uh, so if you know how to answer someone else's question, right, then by all means, please create a thread for them as well. Okay. I think if you keep replying to the same person over and over again, it will create a thread. How do you create a thread? You hold, you, I'm assuming you're on a desktop, okay, or laptop. Hold, uh, hover over the thing. Okay, click on this button with the hash and the bubble. Okay, you can give it a thread name if you want, and then you can just reply. Right? Please give uh, please give better replies than, than what I just gave. Okay, all right. So that's the you know uh just workshop etiquette for for this. Right? I might end up repeating myself uh for each of the sessions. So if you are joining us for the rest of the sessions, please bear with me. I might need to repeat this part. Okay. Uh, third thing I have a request for is. Um, if you have uh, urgent questions, uh, if you have anything urgent, right, then please, by all means, uh, feel free to feel free to uh, unmute yourself and tell me. Okay. Uh, for example, if I am suddenly like this, that means I'm probably muted or my sound has died. Okay. Please, uh, please just unmute and let me know so and don't let me keep talking. Don't let me keep talking for like ten minutes. Okay. I I, I heard about this this prof somewhere who you know he was muted for an entire session and no one told him. Right. Don't let me be that guy. Thanks. Okay, or if I'm not sharing my screen when I expect to be. Okay, am I sharing my screen? I'm sharing my screen, right? Yes, okay, I'm sharing my screen. Okay, so uh, are we okay? Ken? All right, no problems. Good, all good to go. Feel free to send your Zoom emojis and stuff if you're, if you're up for it, okay? All right, let's get started with the actual workshop. Let me start by sending you a link to all the slides that we are going through, right? The slides here might be subject to change. I might realize that some of them have errors or things like that, you know, just bear with me. Uh, let me just pull up the slides. Okay, so the slides are going to be here. Okay, tk.sg slash code exp workshop materials. I will pin this. Okay, those of you who are familiar with Discord, all right, you will know that you can just click on this pin over here to look for pin messages. Okay, so important stuff, right? We will, important stuff we will pin to this channel, right? And you know what? I'm just going to put in the links as well. All right, so uh, workshop materials. Okay, so these are all just slides, right? Uh, and you know what? If you find that you can get by with just looking at the slides, that's fine as well. Okay, um, since you're here, okay, uh, can I also request for everyone to help me out if you haven't done so yet, right? Because I see some, uh, I see some of you haven't done so yet. Uh, some of you uh, are still not in your groups, such as uh, you know, Mister or Miss Banana One Two Three over here. Okay. Um, if you can help us out, just go to join group, right? Just follow the instructions over here. Just type in slash join group. If you do join group, right, and then you choose the first one. Okay, then you just choose what category you are, one for JC, ITE, IP. Uh, and then second here, two for Unipoly. Group number is the number that you have inside your inside your email. Okay, then after that, it will assign you your group. You will see it down here. Okay, you see it down here. Then you can message your group. Just be aware that the stuff is not fully private. If you want to talk bad about me, don't talk bad about me over there. Thank you very much. I can see. Okay, all right. So uh, what else do I need to... What else do I need to tell you? Yes, also please uh, update your name, right? Please don't be banana123 throughout the duration of this program, okay? Um, the reason partly for that is that your mentors are going to hop into your groups at some point, okay? Um, this is organized by DSTA. I guess full disclosure, I'm not a DSTA staff member. Uh, I'm from Think Academy. We are an uh, we are a comp we are an education company that's been engaged to run Code EXP, okay? Uh, DSTA will bring in some mentors to talk to you, get to know you. Maybe they'll have interesting opportunities for you in the future, all right? But it's very hard for them to have interesting opportunities for Banana123, okay? So uh, please, you know, uh, change to your actual name. If you want to change your name, all you need to do is to click on your name over here, right? Just, uh, and then I think edit profile uh, and then edit server profile, okay? And I've, the, same announce, the same instructions are available inside announcements somewhere, all right? So uh, there you go, uh, follow it, set your server nickname, okay? So, Right, okay, okay, right click on your name, easier. Right click and choose edit server profile, change to your name, right? Which means that your username on this server will be your actual name rather than banana123. I'm sorry to keep picking on banana123, whoever you are, okay? But it's just one of the one of the more amusing usernames that have shown up, okay? So yeah, uh, if any questions, once again, please let us know inside, the, inside this channel, okay? Let me just check, is my connection going okay? I think so. 
All right, let's get started. I have talked for about 20 minutes about admin stuff. All right, let's go. Okay, so uh, what we are learning for today's is React Native. Okay, we are learning React Native is a cross-platform uh, mobile app development solution. And that's great because we are a mobile app development hackathon. Okay, your job is to create a mobile app. All right, uh, there are, of course, many, many ways to create a mobile app. One of them is by using your native platforms or native platform solutions. Okay, so those of you who are familiar with these kinds of things, you know that there is uh, Apple has their own the developer stuff. Okay, and in fact tonight they're announcing new stuff at their WWDC Worldwide Developers Conference. Okay, so uh, if you are into Swift and Xcode and all that stuff, then by all means go ahead and use that. It's okay. Okay, if you are an Android user then you might want to consider using uh, the Android platform, okay? They just had Google I.O. There's a bunch of new stuff out there, okay? And uh, these two are perfectly legit, right? You, if you submit on these two, you can't really go wrong. Uh, we're, not expecting, we're not expecting you to actually use uh, a React Native for the competition, okay? It's not a requirement to use React Native for the competition. Let me get that straight, okay? So as long as you have something to show, all right? then that's fine. But these two come with their own set of limitations, right? One is uh, for Apple stuff, you have to use Apple stuff, okay? You need to use a MacBook. You need to use, a, uh, you, well, you don't need an iOS device. You can actually run it on your MacBook, but you need a MacBook, right? Or some kind of like, you know, scuffed uh, virtual machine or something like that, okay? For Android, well, Android is good in that sense because you can actually go ahead and use a PC. You can use a Mac, you can use Linux. Okay, and you can develop for Android and yeah, um, as long as you have an Android phone, yep, that's perfectly fine. Okay, um, my, yep, so that's okay, but we also don't want to exclude people who want to use uh, iOS devices. Okay, so that's why we settled on React Native for this, this particular Hack Hackberry Hackathon workshop, All right? React Native is a platform that can let you build across platform, sort of, it's a, it's an API, it's a developer platform that can let you build across platforms, okay? So you can use iOS, okay? You can use iOS, you can use uh, Android, okay? And I have some resources for you if you really want, you can look through these. Uh, I link to Udemy here, I link to the direct Udemy course here, okay? Uh, but I think I mentioned in the tech stack, right? If you go to nlbsg.udemy.com, you, if you have a library membership, you have uh, free access to all these different, oops, those are my parents and kids, uh, you, uh, uh, I library accounts. All right, so if you have free access, uh, you know what, let me just sign in as myself. Okay, so, all right, so once you're in, right, you have free access to all these Udemy business courses, which means that you get all kinds of good stuff for free, right? Because what they do is, they'll actually go and curate some of the best courses on Udemy business, right? So you can actually go there and learn. Look, ChatGPT, right? Good stuff. Okay, so uh, so yeah, if you want to learn, uh, you know, you probably don't need to buy, right? You can just go and pick it up for free. Okay, uh, Flutter is another uh, cross-platform uh, framework. It's like React Native. It's by Google for some reason, right? For some reason, they have two platforms. Um, yeah. Yeah, feel free to use others, I guess, right? If you are going to mix, if you're if you're familiar with like game development, then I guess you could use Unity. Um, yeah, you could make a mobile app with that. You could even use HTML and CSS. You could use web technologies to for this uh, program. Uh, no one's stopping you because a lot of web apps nowadays look and feel a lot like mobile apps. Okay, so why use React Native in the first place? Well, the aim is so that you can write once, you can deploy to both iOS and Android, okay? And that's really great for when you're first starting out. Uh, actual startups, where they want to target both iOS and Android, they will probably, right, if they, if they are strapped for cash, if they don't have enough resources to like start developing both code bases at one time, they will just use one of these cross-platform uh, solutions. Okay, so it's great for simple apps and MVPs, minimum viable products, which is what you are going to build for a hackathon, correct? Okay, and it's easy for web developers to pick up. So I hope you had a chance to join us with some background in HTML and CSS, okay? If you didn't, it might be a little bit harder for you to get caught up, not impossible. I'm, I'm assuming all of you come in with some programming background, hopefully, okay? If you have no programming background, uh, Udemy, Udemy, go Udemy afterwards. Okay, all right. So, uh, however, some people don't like it. Okay, some people don't like React Native. First of all, well, uh, 
on a spiritual level, uh, it's but it's made by Meta. Right? It's made by Facebook. People who make Facebook and Instagram. So some people don't like that. Okay, uh, you don't get to use the latest new features and APIs. Right, and sometimes you end up working slower. Uh, because you know there's just there's some things that are harder to do. Okay, the platform owners control the platform, so their developer tools are more optimized for their platforms. Okay, and one of the biggest advantages or disadvantages is that it's in JavaScript. Okay, JavaScript is one of the weirdest languages in the world. Okay, it does all kinds of weird things. It's widely mocked, but it's also one of the most popular, right? Because you can't escape it. The entire reason I can show you this web page with a slide on it is because of JavaScript. Okay, they built this entire thing with JavaScript. Okay, so if you're interested, please head over to reactnative.dev and learn more. What, we are, what I'm going to do during these two days is I'm going to, you know, like a, I'm going to semi-speed run some of these concepts now, okay? Um, I'm just going to try and cover as much ground as I can. If you can type and keep up, that's great, okay? If you, but I think more important would be to listen and, you know, have a critical mind and just try and think of interesting questions, okay? Think of questions that you can ask, problems that you think you might run into, right? And, you know, just other things that might be relevant to you when you get started with your project, okay? Because I don't think this is the best platform for us to, you know, earn everything, okay? Uh, we would normally run this course in, I don't know, about, three or four weeks, okay, over like 15 hours a week or something like that. But I'm trying to compress most of it down to about, uh, you know, 12 hours, all right, for you. Okay, so uh, we might, you might feel a bit lost here and there. Try and cover, try and do it, try and follow along if you can, right? If you have a computer with you, by all means, okay? If you have questions, that's the important part. Try and ask any questions because otherwise you might as well just watch the YouTube video, right? Okay, so try and ask questions. Actually, no lah. If you have questions later, if you watch the YouTube video and you have questions, you can still go to the Discord and ask, okay? All right, so let's get started with uh, Hello World. All right, uh, simple hello world in React Native. The, for this first part, you do not need to install anything. Okay, uh, I just need your help to, I just need your help to, uh, what do you call it? Uh, hang on, I got distracted by emitting people. All right, so for this first part, you don't need to record, you don't need to install anything just yet, all right? But before lunch, okay, if you, are, if you want, I'm going to get you to install the stuff necessary for React Native in uh, development on your computer, okay? But for the first part of this course, this first three hours, you can do everything in a browser. I do not recommend doing it on an iPad. I do not recommend doing it on, uh, maybe Chromebook should be okay, right? But definitely not an iPad, not a mobile, not a mobile device. Okay, let's go. All right, so any questions? Let me, let me go pull up questions. Okay, no questions yet. All right, okay. All right, let me pull my questions to my other window so that I can, I can get started over here. All right, so uh, let's get started. And the first thing I want to do is I want to introduce JavaScript, okay? So JavaScript was, uh, you know, it's a it's a fun little language, right? It's written in 1995, which makes it many years old now, okay? 30 over years old, almost 30 years old. Widely memed about, and it was, uh, it's not Java, right? The weird thing is that uh, you might know that Android development is done in Java or maybe more in Kotlin nowadays, but it's not the same language, right? Uh, named similarly to ride on its popularity. Well, jokes on you, Java, right? JavaScript is way more advanced nowadays, right? Way more, way more in use nowadays, okay? So if you've done any HTML and CSS, okay? HTML is how you put the structure of a web page, okay? It's all this angle bracket stuff. CSS is how you style it and you use JavaScript for behavior, okay? So it's used for many different things. In fact, there are lots and lots of stuff that are written in JavaScript. So this entire thing, this entire Google workspace, not G Suite anymore, I should update these slides. Okay, this entire Google Slides thing is written in JavaScript, okay? In fact, Discord, right? This entire Discord app, right? Much of this Discord app, which I'm trying to pull onto screen here it is, okay? Much of this Discord app is written in JavaScript as well, okay? It's actually a, it's actually a website that's disguised as a desktop app in this case. Okay, so I don't think they use React Native, but they use JavaScript of some kind. All right, so there's lots and lots of stuff you can do. You can do back-end programming. Entire servers can run on JavaScript, okay? And you can use JavaScript to let people write more JavaScript, which is what we're going to do, right, in using in a moment, right? Your browser runs on JavaScript. You can, if you have a Chrome inspector, you can open it up and you can take a look at what's going on under the scenes. So if I click over here, I can press, uh, where's my inspect? Where's my inspect? Command option I. 
Okay, uh, I forgot where it went. Okay, but uh, but this is the Chrome inspector, and this is uh the thing that's looking through all the different JavaScript stuff that's available. Okay, so that's uh it's ubiquitous lah. Okay, so I'm just going to very quickly run through you know basic JavaScript, and I think uh, all of you here hopefully have some uh, programming background. Okay, so you've probably done Python, is my guess. Okay, um, but yeah, so JavaScript. If you do want to try out JavaScript. What you can do is you can open up uh, any web page, right? You can open up any web page and you can actually go ahead and uh, try things out. So I'm going to try it over here and just open up my, you know, like my Chrome front page, okay? Your job is to open up the inspector, which I couldn't find just now. Where did it go? Under tools, more tools, okay? More tools, developer tools, okay? So you can press Command Option I on a Mac, or you can press a Control something I on a, on a Windows. Okay, all right. So once you do that, right, you have this little console over here. Then you can just type stuff in. You can say var num one equals to one var. Oops, hang on. My yeah, I got interrupted by by anything people any people. Okay, var num two equals to two. All right, and var sum one equals to num one plus num two. Wow, so interesting, right? Exciting. Okay, very exciting. This is all intro computer science stuff. Okay, if you want to print stuff, all right, this one you should try to remember is console.log, where if you want to console.log, someone, yay, it's three, congratulations. All right, you are a programmer, congratulations. Okay, you can console.log, hello world as well. Okay, and what's console? Console is this thing. This thing is the console there. It says console over there, right? Log just means write something down. Okay. You can do all kinds of stuff. You can uh, you can declare variables without using the var uh, keyword. You can say txt equals to hello. Okay. You can say txt2 equals to I am a banana. All right. You can say txt1 plus txt2, right? And it will, oops. Okay. Uh, say so txt plus txt2, right? And it will say, hello, I'm a banana. Okay. All right. So all this is very basic level, basic intro level JavaScript, right? Those of you who know more JavaScript might be yelling at me to say, don't use var. Okay. Yes, that's right. Right. Nowadays, people like to use a let. Okay. So let something equals to five. Okay. So let is a better way of doing things. Okay. And JavaScript has changed a lot over the years. Okay. So those of you who are really cool and keeping up with JavaScript, why are you here? Um, okay. You want to learn React Native. All right. Those of you who have kept up with JavaScript, you know that stuff has changed. Okay. And now people don't use var anymore. They use let because it's a more modern way of doing things. Okay. So you can do all kinds of stuff. You can plus minus times divide. Okay. Right. So if I were to ask you to do something simple, like a BMI calculator, which I love doing in my classes, right? Let's say I do bar weight equals to, let's say you are, uh, you know, like a 80 kg. Okay. Let's say you are uh, height equals to 1.7. Okay. As you can see, this is in my console. I've done this before. Okay. If I want to calculate my BMI, or I shouldn't use var, let BMI equals to weight divided by height times height. Okay, so that's very simple stuff. Then I can say console.log, your BMI is plus BMI. Okay, right. So there you go, right? It just prints out my the BMI. This is not my BMI, okay? But it prints out a BMI on the screen. Okay, so that's simple enough, all right? And if you want to do some other things like uh, if statements, okay, sure, we can do uh, if BMI greater than, is it 25? 25. Open curly brace, console dot log, you are overweight. Okay, no judgment, but that's just how it's defined, medically, medically overweight, right? So that's how an if statement looks. It's not too different from many other languages. The, uh, if you're coming from Python, I guess a few things to take note. The curly braces are required before multiple lines. The indentation is not required, but is highly recommended. Okay, there's no colon. Okay, but the, and you do need the brackets around this. Okay, you do need the brackets around this. Okay, so if you are familiar enough with any programming language, okay, um, there is a website for this. I'm trying to remember the name. It's Learn X in Y Minutes, I remember correctly. Okay, if I just learn X in Y Minute and search for JavaScript, okay, so what it does is it will give you a whole bunch of example stuff, right? And you can just read through. Okay, you can just read through the comments, read through all the different things. Uh, it'll try and point out all the different stuff and it kind of assumes that you know what most of these mean, right? Like bitwise operator and precedence. And you know, then you're like, hey, look, there's something called infinity. There's something called nan, which is not the 
bread, it's uh, not a number. Okay, there's also true and false. Unlike uh, Python, it's capital T, it's not capital T, it's not capital F. All right, one thing you'll notice is that over here, the on this website, they put uh, semicolons, all right, whereas just now, I did not put any semicolons. Okay, semicolons are optional in JavaScript. Okay, so some people like them. Uh, your style guide might, uh, if you later I'll get you to install a style formatter, it might in include it for you. That's fine, just live with it. Okay. All right, so that's uh, JavaScript. I'm going to uh, I'm going to skip past the, the if statements and stuff, and I'm going to maybe go to functions. Okay, so let's say uh, you want to put something on screen, right? This is web development, huh? All right? So you can post something, you could alert, hello world. Okay, if you do that, right, it will pop something up and interrupt the user, much like the Zoom stuff uh, interrupted my typing just now. Oh, there we go, here's another one. Okay, so, um, so what this does is you pop up an alert, right? And the user cannot click anything on the page. They must click OK to continue. Okay, but that's a function, right? That's a function. Those of you, uh, you probably know functions from any other programming language. Okay, you can also, you know, console.log is a function, right? Hello world, right? And what that does is it will print hello world inside the console. So these are functions, okay? And if you want to create a function, all right, you can actually do this. You can just say function, all right? Let's say uh, calculate BMI, all right? It takes in two arguments, weight and height, open curly brace, okay? And what you want to do is you want to uh, perhaps return the weight divided by height. Let's do it in a bracket, height times height. Okay, simple enough, right? So now I've created this function. If I want to calculate someone's BMI, let's say I want to calculate a BMI of a three-ton truck, 3,000 comma five, right? So the BMI of this three-ton truck is 120. Not very healthy, but it's a three-ton truck. Okay, so that's a function, all right? Now, I want to point out though that there are many different ways to write functions, okay, in JavaScript. In JavaScript, there are many different ways to write functions. And uh, this is the reason why I'm pointing this out is because you are going to go online, you're going to search for information, or you're going to ask ChatGPT, by all means, okay? But when you do that, you are going to you're going to see other people's answers and how they do stuff. So this function one, right, is the simplest way of creating your function, right? But there are other ways. So one way that you might see is bar calculate BMI equals to uh, function. Hang on, uh, I'm, I forgot by I forgot my things. Okay, so function weight comma height open curly brace right return weight divided by height times height. Okay, I shouldn't call this, let me call this calculate BMI2. Okay, so this thing over here is a variable that just happens to be a function. Okay, it's a variable that just happens to be a function and it works the same. I can say calculate BMI2, I'll give it the same values just to prove that it works. Okay, this is fine. All right, so uh, this is another way of defining your function. Okay, and there's a third way. All right, and this way is even even better. Okay. Uh, because what this does is, is going to save you from having to even write the word function. Okay, so this is arrow notation, which you are going to see a lot of later on, right? You can just remove the word function, but you have to add this funky fat arrow over here. Right, to kind of say, oh, these are my arguments, right? But this is the fat arrow and this is the function body. Okay. All right. So all these are different ways of writing functions inside JavaScript. All right. So and you know what? I have I have slides for this. I just happen to have too much fun inside the console. Okay, so once again, JavaScript. Oh, by the way, if you copy and paste from the slides, be careful of the of the smart quotes. Okay, the operators, right? This is a BMI calculator. It's if else. Okay, that's how it looks like in JavaScript, if and else if. Those of you coming from Python, this might, it's not quite the same as elif, right? But it's the uh, same concept, okay? Comparisons greater than, less than, uh, or, and, or, okay? If you ever need them. And down here, we have functions, okay? So functions, 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 okay? All right, so there's a lot more JS, right? If you want, you can learn it, but I just wanted to take a moment to go through some of these things, all right?
Okay, so now I want to take a moment to talk about a few more JavaScript functions, right? Uh, I'm not sure if these were, I don't think these were covered in the intro material we sent to you, but they are fairly useful to know. Okay, so let me hit back to this tab over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a function called set timeout. I mean, no, I'm not going to create a function. I'm going to call a function called set timeout. Okay, so set timeout. Okay, you can see over here there's some auto complete and the set timeout over here actually gets a few of these things to do right you can set timeout with a open bracket ah hang on i can't type because the zoom decided okay so first of all all right sorry let me make a let me make a function called say hello all right let say hello equals to so this is a function that does console.log you know what let's just do let's just be annoying and say alert hello okay so this is a low function that's uh that just says hello okay so if i run it right if i run it uh every time every time the admit button comes in uh, it messes things up for me a bit but it's okay all right if i just run it it will say hello hello great that's great okay so if i want this to run in a few seconds time okay i have this thing called set timeout it's this is a web thing right so i can say set, set timeout say hello five thousand. okay Let's count to 5,000, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, and it should pop up on screen. Okay, so this thing is interesting because this is a function that takes in another function. You're going to see this a lot in React Native, okay? And, you know, just generally uh, intermediate JavaScript, okay? Notice what it does. It says, you know, set timeout, right? Is it in 5,000 milliseconds, please run this function. And because this function is a variable, okay, then yeah, sure, we just pass it inside here, though. Okay, no problem. All right, so that's not bad. Okay, um, you might also want to do something like this. Okay, you might also want to perhaps not even bother giving it a say hello name. You can write it like this, right? So set timeout, open bracket. All right, then I'm going to take the contents of this thing. All right, so bracket, bracket, arrow, curly brace, alert, hello, exclamation mark, close curly brace, comma, 5,000. Okay, you see this right here, All right? This thing right here does the exact same thing as before. Oh, there we go, hello. All right, but it doesn't bother giving this function a name, right? You don't even bother naming the function, right? So now this is this considered an anonymous function, okay? It's got no name, right? All it does is it lives as an argument in set timeout. It's kind of like saying, you know, I could have said const uh, time taken uh, or delay equals to 5,000, right? I could have done this. I could have said set timeout bracket, say hello, comma, delay. Right. By the way, const is constant. Okay. So once I do this, yeah, this, this is fine, but so is this. Right. So it really depends. Right. If you're going to reuse this uh, constant elsewhere, then by all means, you define it and then you use it inside here. If you're never going to reuse it, then okay, look, then you can just call it inside here one time. Okay. So this is a callback. Right. You are essentially, you know, saying, hey, later, can you call back this function over? Okay, it's like, you know, people try and call you, you cannot pick up the call right now, you call them back later, you leave a mental note to call them back in five seconds time. Okay, so why do we need these, right? Why do we need this callback? Because in app development, right, you are usually defining functions for events that happen later, right? When the user taps this button, I want to run the, this function. After a certain amount of time, I want to log the user out. When I'm done downloading the file, I need to show a notification, right? These are all asynchronous functions. They're all running in the background or they might run in the future. You're going to see a lot of these in app development, okay? So it's not quite the same as your, uh, you know, intro CS101 Python style class where you start, a file, start from the beginning of the file and you go to the end of the file, right? What actually happens here is that for app development, okay, you are creating all these things that will get run under certain conditions, okay? All right, uh, I think that's about it for my intro to JavaScript. Let me just check, okay, you know what? Let me hit back to my slides, 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 slides. Okay, uh, let me know if you have any questions so far, right? If you have any questions, uh, please let me know in the Discord chat. You can let me know here as well. I think I have the chat open. Where's my, where's my chat? My chat is, okay, my chat is open. All right, my chat is somewhere here. Okay, but uh, I have a lot of windows on my screen. I'm very confused, right? Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, you know, anything you want to clarify, this is a great time to ask.
because you're here during the live lesson and you're not watching the YouTube video. I mean, if you're watching YouTube video now, then I guess too bad. No, you can still ask me in the Discord. Okay, but anyway, um, all this stuff is probably in the slides. Okay, I just kind of like talk through it instead. Okay, so a few things. Uh, ES6, right? In the mid 2010s, JavaScript finally grew up. Okay, and there's a whole bunch of new stuff. Uh, not new already, lah. It's been like seven or eight years, okay? But uh, it's a standardized specification. So there's a whole bunch of new stuff that's been added to JavaScript, okay? So for example, right? Used to be that you had to do this console.log, hello, comma, plus first name, plus space, plus last name, okay? Uh, those of you who've done Python, someone probably made you do this before, okay? Now, you can use template literals, which has string interpolation built in. What string interpolation is like your primary school close passage. Okay, you have a blank and then you just put a variable inside. Okay, so the one thing to take note of is that it's not a double inverted comma anymore. It's a backtick. The backtick is the symbol next to one on your keyboard, assuming you're on a regular US keyboard. Okay, I, I conducted this lesson in another country before and I was like, oh, it's the button next to one. And no, it's not the button next to one in all the keyboards in the world. Okay, anyway, so yeah, you just use dollar curly brace and put a variable name and you put it inside. A lot easier to type, right? We will use this. Next is, uh, if you want multi-line strings, okay, you also use back tick, right? Use a back tick and then you can press enter and you can continue doing stuff. Otherwise, you do like this slash n slash t slash n is new line and slash t is tab. Right? Very troublesome, okay? Uh, const and let are new, right? Const is uh, something that you cannot be redefined, okay? Uh, there's a typo here, can't redefine a cost, which is probably true, okay? But uh, over here, uh, let, let has a very subtle change from var. Var is uh, this thing where, you know, the scope just expands beyond where it's supposed to go, okay? So let will only exist within its nearest scope, right? Nearest block scope, right? Nearest curly braces. Okay, so over here, if you do console.log b, it will error. If you do var with this, it will work. Okay, which is kind of weird. Okay, like I said, JavaScript is weird. Okay, so arrow functions, right? These are arrow functions. Okay, uh, this one, you know, there is this uh, map uh, thing you can go through an array, right? So you pass it something to do to every single element in the array. It's a higher order function. Those of you who have done, you know, intro CS in your universities or whatever, you probably you probably suffered through higher order functions. Okay, um, so yeah, same thing in JavaScript to do higher order function, you can just say elements dot map, element, arrow element dot length, which means for every element, this is actually a function. This function it takes in an element as an argument and it returns the element dot length. Okay, so if you look at my example just now, right, this thing over here. Weight, height, this thing over here, right? Uh, where's my here? Set timeout, this thing. Okay. Um. Yeah. You can actually, you can actually even reduce it some more, right? You can actually say, set timeout. You don't need this thing. If it's the only line, you can get rid of it. Okay. So that's a, uh, that's another little optimization. Okay. Uh, if there's only one argument, right? Then you can just take away the brackets. You can just put the argument inside. Okay. Again, all this not super critical to know, right? Uh, there's classes. We're not going to use that. Destructuring, all right. This one is a little bit troublesome uh, to explain. I think it will be better if I talk about this later when we reach it. Okay, so destructuring and spread. I will. I think I'll talk about this later when we actually encounter it in uh, React Native. Okay, I talked for almost one hour already. Everyone okay so far? Can, can. Okay, okay, okay. So anyway, um, let's take a short break. All right, let's take a, just a five minute break. This is more for me to drink water than, than for you. I think I, you're probably fine. Okay. Uh, if you need to go toilet, anything, right? We will resume uh, in five minutes time. I'll put a handy little timer on screen and we will continue in five minutes. Okay. All right. Let's take a short break. Uh, those watching on YouTube, I'm not going to pause the recording in between, in between breaks because uh, there's a very high chance that I forget to resume. So you just skip ahead five minutes. Okay. I promise nothing will happen.
this thing's going to beep. Let me close it before it beeps. Ah, no. Ah, okay. All right, sorry. Okay, all right. We are resuming and I am not muted. Okay, good. All right. Okay, uh, I just realized I should have asked you all to sign up for an Expo account before this. Never mind. Let's do that. Okay, so before I move on, can I trouble all of you to head over to this URL? Uh, used to be expo.io, but sure, expo.dev is fine as well. All right, please go and sign up over here. Okay, so I'm going to put this link into the sign up at, I'm going to put this into the Discord, right? Uh, expo.dev. All right, please head over to the Discord and uh, click on the link if you don't know how to type this like eight letters. Okay, I'm sure you can. I'm sure you can find it, right? You can type expo.io if you are very lazy. You want to type one less letter, also can. It will redirect you, okay? But uh, the aim right now is to click on sign up, okay? And you know what? I'm going to sign up for a new account just to demo this uh, during the day, okay? So YJ soon plus uh, code exp2023 at... Okay, you know that for Gmail accounts, you can put plus something, right? To have a fake email address. Not fake, like, it's just an extra email address, okay? Uh, it will still reach you. Um, it's just that it's an easier thing to filter, right? Which is a nice way to, you know, like uh, categorize your different emails, okay? So anyway, uh, username, uh, YJ soon for EXP2023, okay? Uh, I will use my rubbish selected password. Give me a moment. Thanks. Now, now all of you know my password, which is great. Hang on, huh? Okay, you know what? Ah. Okay, yeah, you know what? I will probably deactivate this uh this password later. Sure. So you know what? Please don't use my password. Okay, thanks. All right, so uh I'm gonna sign up. And here we go. Okay, so now I'm in I'm in uh expo. Okay, so that's step one, right? Please help me sign up for an expo account. Okay, I'm gonna continue talking while you do this and I'm gonna tell you what expo is and all that. Lah, okay, so uh, what is going on? What is expo? I thought we were learning React Native. Okay, so first things first, right? We're using this tool called expo. Okay, we're not, not Singapore expo. Okay, but uh, expo is, you know what? I need to open the, I need to open the private window because I'm logged in. Expo is essentially a tool chain that runs on React Native, okay? That helps you run React Native and is very, very handy, okay? Before Expo, you had to do a lot of command line stuff to get set up. It was a bit troublesome, okay? Uh, not impossible, but, you know, probably would have taken us an hour to get set up rather than the five minutes that we're going to do later, okay? So, uh, so yeah, you can, there's a whole bunch of stuff that it wraps around React Native for you, okay? And it will even help you build your apps, which means that when you want to finally submit your app to, you know, the App Store or the Play Store, right, they can actually help you build native apps for you. I don't think you are going to need to do that for this particular hackathon, all right? But maybe one day you want to, all right? Sure, I think that's a good option to have, okay? And you can even build for the web, right, which is pretty cool, okay? So... Good stuff, right? It's so it's so good that you know the React Native team has recognized it and they now recommend it as the way to get started with uh React Native, right? So let me just check. Let me just show you, right? If you go to React Native, uh, getting started, right? I believe that they will just tell you to uh, why don't you just go and use Expo? In fact, here you go, right? On the React Native website, they just embed a Expo snack, which is what I'm going to tell you about next. Okay, it's a snack player, handy tool created by Expo, right? So, yeah, it's a uh, you know, uh, industry, people people in industry have recognized it. It's good, right? We can use it, okay? It's not some random tool that will go away tomorrow, right? We've been using it for the last few years. Okay, so that's good. One, What I'd like you to do is I would like you to actually hit, once you've registered, right? Head over to this website called expo.io slash snacks, okay? Expo.io slash snacks, right? So let me just put the link inside the Discord, HTTPS expo dot io slash snacks okay so that will actually lead you to this page over here where you can make a new snack very good right everyone 10 o'clock almost lunchtime very hungry make a new snack okay so jokes aside click on new snack okay click on new snack and you're going to get what well, forlorn chocolate very good okay so anyway um the idea is that you can actually build your react native app entirely on the web Okay, might I mean might not fully recommend it for all usage, right? But it's doable. Okay. Let me just re change my font size a bit. This is what it looks like for you. Okay, I had it zoomed in for a class. Okay. And it'll give you a random name. It just so happens that mine is snack related. I'm not sure about yours. 
okay? But uh, you can rename it if you want. So I'm going to rename this to Hello World. Okay, so pretty simple. All right, and it'll give you a bunch of stuff. Okay, so I'd like to, at this point, I do want to pause to make sure that everyone can get this running, right? So if you have any questions, right, please let us know in the chat, okay? Uh, those of you who just joined us, uh, that my preference is for you to uh, ask questions and you know give feedback in the Discord chat as far as possible. Okay, Discord chat rather than the Zoom chat because that can outlive this Zoom session. Okay, questions, anyone? Nope, I will wait a while. There's someone who's unmuted. It's maybe by accident. All right. Okay, so hopefully you all have this uh, Exmo snack ready. Okay. And I will uh, kind of like walk you through our first little app. Okay. Okay, so hopefully you have that ready, right? Even if you don't log in, you can actually use Expo Snack, right? So what I'm going to get you to do uh, is I'm actually going to get you to use one of my templates. Okay, uh, I'm going to get you to use one of my templates, right? Let me just check whether the template still works. I'm gonna, let me just paste it over here. Okay, this is written in older Expo version, right? But I think it should still work, right? No, I want to see what the error message was. We upgraded. Okay, okay, that's fine. All right, so... Uh, Hmm. Okay, so this is, uh, so yeah, la. there's a couple of ways to do this next part, okay? You have your Hello World snack, okay? There's a bunch of stuff inside here, more stuff than we need to get started, all right? So what I'm going to get you to do is one of two things, right? So the first thing you can do is you can actually just delete everything and copy this code and paste inside. So I'm going to put it inside Discord, right? So let me just go to Discord and show you, right? So we can... Those of you watching this on the YouTube video later, just, you know, you can scroll back, lah, like travel back through time, right? So I'm just going to put this uh, JavaScript. All right, so this is your starter code. Starter code for hello world. Okay, so what you can do is you can just uh, go grab this code, copy, and paste it inside your hello world, right? That's probably the best way. If you're following the slides, you'll notice that we have a starter link for you, right? But if you go to that starter link, it will complain that the version is uh, out of sync, right? It's an older version, okay? Maybe we'll update it someday. All right, but it's okay. Let's just paste the code inside here. Let me increase the font size a bit. I'm just going to press command equals. You know what? I think I can increase the font size without... Let me check. Blah, blah, blah. You can turn on your dark mode if you want. I think maybe a bit easier to see, okay? Uh, you can turn on Vim if you are, you know, super, super lead and like to use colon WQ to quit, okay? Uh, yeah, what else? Is there a font size editor? Nope, there isn't. Okay, never mind. I'm just going to increase font size the normal way, command, command equals, okay? All right, let me uh, orientate you to this thing over here, okay? So what you can do is you can, of course, start changing stuff. Right, I would like you to start changing stuff. Change, you know what? Okay, edit so that this thing says hello world. Right, you can ignore me for a while. Just go and edit this so that it says hello world. Hopefully, you know how to do that. Okay. All right. So while you're doing that, I'm going to point out some things on screen. On the left hand side of the screen are the open files at the top. Okay, think of this as a tab bar. Okay, there's a tab bar of files that are open. And below that are all the different files inside the project. Think of it as the folder that you store on your computer. Okay, so there's a components over here with an asset example.js that we're not using. There's app.js, which is the file that we are opening. And that is a default file that you get when you start an Xcode project. There is package.json. If you click on it, it's going to show you this thing in JSON. JSON is JavaScript object notation. Okay, just think of it as a dictionary. And inside here, Everything has a key, followed by a colon, followed by a value. The value itself can be another dictionary, right? Which contains, in this case, more keys and more values, okay? And you separate them using commas. It's a very simple kind of like a database-ish uh, notation that people like to use for storing uh, unstructured data, okay? So I think it should kind of make sense if you just look at it, just be aware of the curly braces around things, right? If you need an array, then you get a square bracket. Right, not too, not too surprising, right? But this package.json is essentially what you tell your JavaScript bundler to install in order to run this project, 
Okay, but we don't need to touch it for now. Let's go back to app.js. Inside app.js, there's a bunch of code. We'll talk about that in a moment. I want to point you to the right-hand side. Right-hand side are previews. Okay, you can preview it on your device, which is pretty cool, right? If you want to try it out, download this Expo Go app on your app on your device. Can be an iOS device, can be an Android device. So let me just click on this, right? They'll say, hey, you can download from the App Store or you can download from Google Play. Okay, and once you download it, what you can do is you can scan the QR code and your app will magically fly from their servers onto your Expo Go app, which means you can run your app within their app. Okay, so it's kind of like a fun little way to test it out on your device. Right? You can actually try it out. Last I tried, uh, I believe this has to be on the same network. I'm not sure if that's been changed, but you know what? You can go and scan this app. You can go and scan this QR code and try, see whether you can get my app, right? Um, yeah. It's not super important for you to try it out right now, okay? There's also options for iOS and Android. If you click on iOS, right, if you press tap to play, what it does is it uses one of these third-party services where they will actually load this onto a simulator that's available online. There you go, right? So this is like a actual iOS simulator that you can have access to, all right? Uh, which is pretty nice, right? It's uh, kind of nice to be able to see what it looks like on an iOS device, okay? If you go to Android, you can do the same thing. Right, you can actually uh, run it. And however, right, in this case, you might notice that there's a queue. Okay, so these are free services available online. And in order to use them, you have to wait. Lah. Okay, if you want, you can sign up for an advertised account and you can pay for it and you can skip the queue, right? Just like your Universal Studios, pay money to skip queue. Okay, but you know what? It's probably fine to just, uh, just use the web preview. The web preview just renders it as though this is uh, your screen. Okay, so... Yeah, so this is your basic uh, expo. What else can you do? There is also a save button, which is very important. I'm going to press save. Okay, once I press save, it will save into my profile. And what I can do is I can copy this and put it into Discord, right? So this is my hello world project. Okay, every time I press save, right, you can go to this website and you can refresh and see my latest code. So that's how you can follow along if you want to, okay? All right, what else? There's also this thing you can run on device. Run on device will actually do similar things to before, right? You can actually have a QR code, Expo Go, things like that, okay? You can download the entire thing as a zip file, right? If you're sick of working on the website, you can download a zip file. You can show the embed code so you can run this thing inside another web page, which is what we saw on the React Native website, okay? All right, and uh, this is my account, okay? All right, so down here, there's a few more things. Uh, this is Prettier. Prettier is a code formatting uh, plugin, right? This code formatting plugin will be able to help you uh, help you make your code a little bit better, right? look a bit nicer, right? So if you click on it, it will reformat your code. Right now, there's nothing wrong with my code. Let me, let me make my code look rubbish. Right? Let's say I put like 20 tabs in front of this, all right? If I press Prettier, it'll be like, no, that's rubbish. Please put it back. Okay, simple. All right, the editor down here we saw, you turn on, you can show the files so you can hide the files. Okay, you can turn on the panel down here, which is where your console.log lives, by the way. Okay, and you can uh, you can turn on off dark theme. You can use Vim. Be careful using Vim. Okay, might not be able to escape. Ha ha ha. All right, so, and then these are the, some other options. Okay, you can turn off the preview. So if you want more space to code. All right, now that we've talked through all that, I hope you all know how to change this to hello world, right? You can just go here, change this to, Hello world. Okay. And the great news is that you don't need to save. You don't need to reload. Nothing happens. All right. In fact, I think it's saved. Right. I should press save anyway. All right. But see over here, it just automatically updates. All right. Hot reloading. Good stuff. Okay. All right. Let's go through the code. Now, one thing that you might be a bit annoyed or confused by is how come my JavaScript got HTML? Okay, how come in my JavaScript suddenly got some HTML? That's gross. Okay, so this is normal, right? This is JSX. Any of you who have done React on the web will be used to this. And you know what? This is not even HTML. Okay, you cannot use your div. You cannot use your IMG. You cannot use P tags and stuff like that. React Native has its own set of tags you have to follow. So I'm just going to call these JSX, right? That's, that's what the term is for putting HTML in JavaScript. I'm going to refer these, to these as JSX, okay? So one of the key things is that in order to get this format, you have to put them in parentheses, right? These round brackets, okay? I could say parentheses or I could say bracket, okay? So when I say bracket, please understand that I am talking about parentheses, okay? All right, because there are a lot of different brackets, got angle bracket, 
You've got curly bracket later if you do arrays got square bracket a lot of bracket i just like to call everything bracket okay so this bracket right this normal round bracket right is how you denote the start of a jsx segment let me zoom in a bit okay all right so that's uh that's part one right so and you can see over here right this is a view okay it contains a text right so you might you might imagine uh, how do you add more text Okay, uh, this feel free to just reply in the chat or whatever, right? How do you add more text? If anyone has any ideas, please let me know in the Discord chat. Okay, I will I'll put it onto my screen so I can see. Wait, wait, I'm just moving the wrong thing around. Okay, so the way you add more text to this, right? You want to add some text underneath, okay? Should be fairly obvious. You just go here, press enter, text. Uh, hi, I'm yj slash text. Okay, notice that before I finish typing, okay, React, the expo thing was like, wow, I got error, you never type properly, what like that, wow, chama. okay, no lies, okay, right, so don't worry about that, okay, but yes, this is not quite the same as HTML, HTML, you type wrongly, the web browser is like, haha, I don't care, I just render whatever I want, okay, but React Native is not the same, okay, React Native will be like, wow, chama, cannot die, you see, if I take away this thing, wow, chama, everything die already, okay, but you will be encountering these things all the time, Right, so you do need to get used to it. Okay, so uh, this is an error message. You can see, oh, uh, expected corresponding JSX closing tag for text. Okay, what's 10 colon 4? It's, uh, it's not a religious thing. All right, 10 colon 4 means the error, I think, is on line 10 and uh, item number 4. Unfortunately, it's wrong. Okay, so, but it'll try and point it out for you. Like, it's like, it's like, oh, hey, how come there's no closing tag? And then you try to find, you just look around there, like, look backwards a bit. Oh, here it is. Okay, so. Uh, you get used to this, right? Get used to your React Native thing panicking and saying something is wrong, okay? Because it's trying to keep up with you as you type, okay? So you type, haven't type finish? It will be like, ah, ah yeah, everything cannot uh, die, uh, die uh. okay? So just bear with it, bear with it. It's like that, okay? Like if if it if it helps, you can you can use that use the voice on repeat to to calm yourself, okay? So all right, uh, let's continue, right? So all this stuff is okay. You're just putting stuff into other stuff, okay? And now there's this thing over here. All right, this is styles. I remember I asked you all to look at uh to look into CSS, right? So in styles, okay, styles are how you do CSS, but they're a bit different. You see down here, wow, this is a lot of brackets, okay? A lot of got round bracket, got curly brace, got curly brace, wow, very chum. Okay, but it's not too bad. I need to deconstruct this for you. Okay, so first of all, this is an attribute. Okay, it's a lot like your HTML attributes, a href equals. Okay, now the only thing is uh Every time you're in JSX and you want to switch into JavaScript, remember JSX is different. JSX is these tags, okay? JavaScript is this. This is a this is styles.container, which is here. Styles.container, okay? So you need to use curly braces, okay? In fact, you need to if you want to have some attribute like a number equals to one, this one also must use uh, also must use curly braces, okay? If you want to switch from a JSX into number also must use, right? A string, no need, right? Uh, name, name equals to banana. String, no need, okay? String is perfectly fine. It's acceptable in JSX. However, a variable or any code that you want to run, you must use curly braces. You're going to see this a lot. You're going to switch between curly braces and round brackets, right? And stuff like that, okay? But what this means is that this thing is expecting to find something called styles, and inside it's got a certain style called container. Okay, so this container over here, all right, has a few CSS like attributes. It's got this thing called flex. All right, flex doesn't mean you go to the gym and you admire your muscles. Okay, you can, but it's the CSS flexbox model. Okay, the flexbox model is what is widely accepted. As a uh, you know, as the standard way of laying things out using Re and React Native, okay. So if you want, I can I'm gonna pop a link into the uh Discord chat called Flexbox Froggy. You know, let me just show it on screen. All right, if you want to learn Flexbox, okay, those of you who come from CSS, all right, uh, you can go and learn some Flex Flexbox, right? It's a it's this law, right? It's this thing. You can actually want to move stuff around. You need to justify content, uh. Flex end, right? Then your frog will land on the lily pad. You press next and yay, very cute, right? And then you can have uh, a lot of different challenges to lay things out on screen. Like, okay, but this is CSS, okay? Uh, I'm just telling you that Flexbox is the thing that is being uh, the, the layout model 
that is being used in React Native. Okay, so flex one, right? I'll explain more of this later on. Huh? It says justify content center and align item center. Let's take away justify content center, right? And it will fly to the top. Okay, so justify content is for vertical alignment. Where is it vertically, right? Is that vertical? That's vertical, right? Yeah, okay. Uh, align items is for horizontal alignment. Okay, all right. So that's your flex box in action. Okay, one thing to take note of is thing says justify content. Where's my flex box froggy? Flex box froggy says justify dash content. Where's my All right, or uh, yeah, justify dash content. Okay, so that's something to get you in your in your React Native. Okay, you cannot use uh, justify dash content. The reason for that is this is actually JavaScript code, and a dash in JavaScript means minus. It will try and find a variable called justify and minus away a variable called content. Then you'll be very confused. Okay, that syntax does not work. All right, so you're going to see this happen a lot. They will change all of these dashes to camel case justify content. Okay. Similarly, for this, this is a string, right? Center. In CSS, you just type center, right? Without the inverted commas, right? Now you need to you need to put the quote quotation marks around it. Okay. Numbers are fine. All right, a lot of different weird rules to remember, lah, okay. If you're just getting used to this. Okay, but there's uh, but once you get used to this, it should be fairly straightforward. You should be able to just do your styling like you would in CSS. Let me just pop, pull up my slides over here. Okay, so they're almost like CSS. You want to use font size? It's font size, capital S. Text align, text align. Background color, background color. Remember to spell like an American. Okay, all right. So styling over here, you need to add style sheets. You can try out Flexbox uh, Froggy, okay? And the styling syntax is actually JSON. All right, just now I talked about JSON. This is just JSON. It's a key, key value pair, right? The key is container, right? And the value is a dictionary that contains more, oops, more key value pairs. Okay, after each of them, there's a comma, right? And one of the standard things that we do in JavaScript is that after your final item, right? Uh, let's say I change the color red. After your final item over here, you will want to add a comma as well. Okay, by the way, color red doesn't work. It's not cascading, right? Just because you set the view to be color red doesn't mean the text is color red. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this text a color of red, right? So let's do that. I'm going to say text style equals to styles.text. Okay, you can, you can do it. You can call anything you want. Think of this as a div name, div ID or something like that, okay? All right, well, more, more like a class, right? So I'm going to say text colon curly brace and drop a comma after that. Move the color red over. Okay. And now this thing over here, my hello world is in red because it takes on this style of styles.text and it comes down here. It looks in the styles. It finds .text and it's got a certain value over here, right? It's got this dictionary of CSS-like properties, style properties. Okay. And it does color colon red. Okay, All right. Does that make sense? All right. I hope this is uh, not an issue for anyone so far. If you have questions, once again, please let me know in the Discord chat. Okay. If I'm talking too fast, my I I don't make any sense. Please tell me. Okay. All right. So. All right. So that's how we style our things. But I want to show you a few more things. All right. There's a there's also a chance that you might want to style things in line. Okay. So the way we do that is like this, huh? Style equals to open curly brace. Hey, stop panicking. Okay. And this one got nothing inside. Okay. So here, this is the weird part. You can actually put your entire JSON inside here. Open curly brace, color colon brown. Can you see the brown? You can see the brown. All right. So what it ends up looking like is this. You get two sets of curly braces. Super weird, man. Okay. But it works. All right. So the first set of curly braces is to essentially switch from JSX to JavaScript. The second set of curly braces is to denote the JSON object that we are passing in. It's just color brown. All right, so you're gonna see this double curly braces a few times, okay? The first set of curly braces is for switching between your JSX to your JavaScript. Second set of curly braces is to define essentially this thing, but in line, okay? That means it's all just inside this style. All right, so far so good, okay? 
All right, so let's say, lah, huh? let's say, I mean, uh, if you, if uh, those of you watching this on the YouTube video, if you wanted a bit of a challenge, here's what I would recommend, right? Those of you who are watching this with me, I'm going to speed past this, all right? If you're watching the YouTube video, you can try doing this, right? Have a giant yellow background, uh, show red bold text of font size 60. You can look at this list for some clues, right? This is your uh, React Native text, uh, text styling example, all right? So... Okay, there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do, right? Containers, style inheritance, blah, 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 blah. And these are all the different uh, properties that you can have. They're called props, okay? But since you're here with me, I will just kind of like quickly go through this. So this one, I couldn't do a color, but I can do background color. Background color yellow, right? Remember to try and put a comma after that. Oh, that's bright. Okay, so once I put a background color yellow, right? If I want my font to be bigger, I can say font size, right? And there's autocomplete, right? So no problem. The good thing about this is that there's some autocomplete available. Font size, let's say 60, and font, oops, font width. So they'll actually give you some examples for you, right? So hello world, they're very large, okay? Okay. All your other stuff applies as well. If you want some padding, sure, you can have padding colon 10. All right, so that will give some padding between this and the things around it. Do you see the padding? Let me change this to 40 so that you can see that you know, now there's a lot of padding and it's not, not enough space for it. I'm going to change the padding back to 10. Okay. So that's your very simple hello world. All right. So what I'm going to do next, okay, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to style this even further, right, by giving adding more views right adding more views around the things okay so let's uh <clears throat> let's see whether we can uh, let's see how we can do this okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to have all right so i'm going to do it this way all right you can follow along if you want okay but this is uh let me change this font size to be less ridiculous okay good so i'm going to make it such that these two are inside another view okay I'm going to make it such that these two are inside another view. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say view style equals to styles dot, let's call it a title container. Okay, and hang on, uh, my mouse lost focus. Okay, and then down here, I'm going to do slash view. Okay, so now my stuff is a bit not aligned anymore. I can just press prettier and it will realign it for me. Okay, so... That didn't do very much, right? Although you notice that hey, this thing is suddenly left aligned, okay? And that's because it's no longer doing the, it no longer has the align items inherited, okay? So now I now there's no title container, right? So let's bring in title container. So I'm just going to do it over here. Title container and add a comma, right? Otherwise you'll complain. And I'm going to say align items center. Okay, so that brings it back to the center. Okay, so hopefully you're getting the gist of it. What I want to do now is I'm going to add a couple more filler views on top and below. So view style equals to styles dot filler container. And this one, I'm just going to close it without putting anything inside. And I'm going to copy this and put it below. Okay, so you can see over here on top, I have a completely useless thing. It's like an empty div in HTML. Right down here, I have an empty div as well, and these I've surrounded them inside another div. So think of a view as a div, lah, right? Assuming that you've uh, done some HTML. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it look weird, right? So I'm going to, for example, I'm going to actually give these some size. Okay. So the filler container, filler container, notice that both of them inherit the same style. Lah. So this guy over here and this guy over here they both point to the same style down here. So whatever I do, heading 10, background color blue, right? whatever I do will be inherited by both of them. Okay. And now what I can do is I can actually play around with the flex, which is what I really wanted to show you. Okay. So let me just, uh, let's change this to with, I don't know, uh, 7, 60%. Okay. So I'm just trying to, hey, oh, uh, very, very Ukraine, okay, uh, unintentionally. But uh, now what I want to do is, if I want these to take up all the space, if I want, so there are actually how many things on the screen, right? Inside my container, I have one thing, two things, and three things, right? If I want them to be of equal ratio, right? Here's what I can do. Uh, this thing, I can say flex one, and this thing, I can say flex one. 
Okay. What that does is these three will divide themselves equally inside their container. Okay, so there's two filler containers. So the ratio will be one is to one is to one. Okay, now imagine what I do if I change this to three. Okay, what's going to happen? Try to imagine your head. This top thing is going to take up three is to one is to three. Correct? So three, it will squish the middle thing. In fact, I've run out of space. Right? But if I want the middle thing to take up more space, it'll be 0 0.5 is to one is to 0 0.5. Okay, so I hope that kind of makes sense. Notice that this thing is not in the middle anymore. So if I want them to be in the middle, I have to do justify content center. I also have to admit that I can never remember which one is vertical, which one is horizontal. I just like tap it in and see what happens. And then if it's not that, I use the other one. Okay, so yeah. So now, you know, I got a nice thing. I can I can give the background color. I can change the background color of this to be less Ukrainian, uh, I guess. Background color, wait, red won't work. Pink. All right, so sure. All right, now it's a, now it's a watch. I have no idea what this is. Okay, but uh, but hopefully you get the idea right behind. I just wanted to show you flex. Okay, flex is really how much you flex you want to exert. Okay, so if you are living with other people, right, and you take up a lot of space, then the other people will take up less space, right? If they all push back equally, right? Let's say you are on MRT train, there are three seats, each of you like you know push your legs out as far as you can, right? You all end up taking an equal amount of space. Don't do that on the MRT. That's kind of gross. Okay. But uh, but you hopefully get my idea, right? So that's what flex is all about. It's a great way of doing layout. All right, let's go add an image. Okay, let's go add an image, right? So now what if you want to add a picture inside here? Okay, so I think one of the things you could do is you could copy them to the from, from the internet and just put it inside, right? This is actually one of the easiest things you can do. All right. Uh, in general, that might not be very advisable for your actual project, right? Because if you grab an image that's hosted on the internet from somewhere, right? Uh, what if you are demoing halfway and then the image doesn't load? Or worse, the person hosting the image is like, huh, I'm going to change this to a picture or something really offensive. Then you get arrested and you go to jail. Okay, so please don't do that. You might want to upload your own images, but let me show you real quick how to, how to show an image on the internet. Okay, so I'm just going to go to Google Images. This is always a bit risky when I do this, uh, you know, live Google images in class. I'm going to search for something like cute cat. That should be safe. Ah, cute cat. Very cute. Okay, good. All right, click on this. All right, very cute. Right click and copy image address. Okay, so copy image address will give you uh, this thing over here. Right, very cute. And we want to put that inside our app. Okay, so we're going to use this new component called image. Image. Okay, if you press, uh, okay, that's, where's my autocomplete? Image, no, that's not autocomplete, never mind. All right, so image, you need to have source, which is not that different from your regular website, right? So source, you need to give it a JSON object. Okay, so I'm using a double double curly brace. Okay, and inside this double brace, I am going to put in the URI, right? URI means, uh, it's like URL, Uniform Resource Identifier, okay? And finally here, this image is a self-closing tag. So I'm just going to, oh, okay. okay. Hey, all right. This might not work. Hang on. Uh. Image, uh, let me see. Blah, 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 blah. Style equals to. Give me a second. Uh. Let me just check to make sure it doesn't want me to do this anymore. Okay, hang on. Uh. I might have some outdated information. <laughs> I think I might need to go to the. React Native documentation. Okay, so React Native docs image. Okay, so this will happen, right? This will happen. Um, I have not apparently not updated my my knowledge of image for a while. Okay, but uh, let me just check how to do an image. So I went online. I went to search for React Native docs image. Okay, went to this thing, and it will say over here. Okay, so now it will show me how to do an image. So hopefully you look at this, it kind of makes sense to you. You see the styles over here, they have the same format as you, okay? And down here, this is a uh, const display and image equals to this, okay? And this one is, uh, I'll explain a bit later, but you just look, focus inside the return, right? So there you go, image, style equals to this, source equals to that, okay? Source equals to that now, and URI, mm, that seems to work fine, okay? Hmm, okay. Right, let's go. I think what the what it needs is I believe it needs the size. Okay, so let's go. Let's go check out the size over here. 
and it's got width and height. So let me just check that real quick, right? I believe it does need a size. So over here I have styles.image. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to define my styles.image down here. Image colon width 100. Height 100. Okay, interesting. All right, I think I know why. Okay, this is something that I pointed out to you a while back. There's this image thing here, all right? Nobody knows what image is because for React Native, you need to import image from React Native in order to use it, okay? So here's what I need to do. When you go up here, import image, okay? I got a little bit uh, a little bit confused by the, by the error message, okay? But this is a very important thing. The moment you want to use something new, you have to import it from the library. Okay, you it's not like uh, many other programming languages where you can just go ahead and use it. It's a bit like Python in a sense, right? Python, there are certain modules which are imported by default. For React Native, the moment you use something new, you do have to import it. Okay, so we're going to see this again with buttons and stuff later on. All right, so yeah, that works. Okay, so the other thing to note is that your image does need this style equals to that because it, otherwise it doesn't know what size to display at. Okay. So my image style down here actually does have the width and the height defined, right? If I'm not wrong, I can just define the width and it will, no, it does not. Okay, so it, you do need the width and the height, okay? All right, so that's it for the Hello World app, right? That's it for the Hello World app. There's a bunch of stuff going on, right? Um, I'm going to pause here for a bit. I'm going to copy and paste this code into the Discord, right? In case you had trouble trying to keep up. Right, I'm going to save it, right? I'm going to copy and paste it into the Discord. Uh, and you know what? I actually have the Hello World project, right? You know what? Let me just go here. Do, 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 do. Okay, so I'm going to actually put my stuff inside here, All right? So final code, I'm just going to put it inside here. Triple back tick plus the word JavaScript will format it as a JavaScript file. And I will put it over here. Okay. All right, so this is where you can find the project that I just did. If you want, you can just click on this and it should bring up my project for you. You should be able to see it, okay? Or if you want to grab your own version, you can get it from here. And I encourage you to try this out, try and style it, see what, see what else you can do with it, uh, make it look different, All right? I have an example in the slides that you can refer to. Right. So yeah, you can refer to you can refer to this this particular thing, right? If you want to make, give it a circle and all that, right? You can uh you can actually do that. Okay, you can actually do that with your border radius. Okay, if you add some radius to it, enough radius, it'll become a circle. Okay, so that's it for the first deck of slides. All right, I think this is a decent pace for me. I don't know about you, okay. But if you have any questions, right, please let us know in the Discord, right? We will, we are monitoring the Discord. If you have any questions, uh, do try, do let us know. Okay, we'll try and help you out there. Okay, if you don't want to clutter up the main timeline uh, of the Discord, right, you feel a bit a, a bit paise, right? Uh, I'm like, uh, you know, I have all this stuff there. Uh, it's okay. Just you can just create a thread underneath. Uh, maybe my Hello World project. Okay. All right, because I'm gonna move on to the next one. Before I, yeah, we'll, we'll move on. We'll take a like five minute break at the end of every hour. Uh, and oh yes, and there's a quiz. Uh, there's a little Kahoot uh, quiz and we have prizes to give away uh, sponsored by our our nice sponsors at DSTA. I mean, they sponsor everything else. Okay, so uh, yeah, please stay around for that. That will run in the last like 20 minutes or so. Okay, right. So in the meantime, okay, let's take a short break. Like, less than five minutes i'll give you i'll take about three minutes okay if i just want to pause for any questions and just make sure that we have uh, everything everyone's up to speed so far okay so let's take a short three minute break and let's uh see if we have any questions that show up in the discord
Okay, I see some questions. I think it's a good time to address them. Uh, Marcus will be answering, Marcus or Sean will be answering them in the in the chat, but I think no harm just addressing them while we are waiting anyway. Do we need a separate file for the CSS styles? We don't need a separate file, but uh, you can have a separate file. Okay, so some people like it, right? Because there are certain things that would be good to have the same style across uh, different things, right? And you will be able to import these. Uh, I think we might have an example for you later on, or I can look, and look it up later, okay? All right, but yes, you can have a separate style. Those of you coming from, from web, you might be like, e, I like to separate my, I like to separate my views and my, uh, I like to separate my views and everything, okay? Uh, yes, you can, you can separate it if you want. You don't have to, okay? Uh, can I code the front end by using React Native or can I use HTML or CSS as well? Oops, hang on, let me switch off this thing. Uh, you can't really mix uh, React Native with HTML and CSS, okay? So that one, so you do have to make a choice, okay? You do need to make a choice. Um, you have to choose between one or the other, all right? So, you know, uh, if you're going to go pure HTML, CSS, then sure, that's uh, actually valid, right? You can continue with just HTML and CSS for your project, okay? But if you want to try React Native, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty nice and... Uh, Nice thing is you can really immediately get it to run on your phone and it feels a lot like a native app. Okay. All right. Yes, uh, Marcus has a good point inside the inside the chat as well. The front, uh, when you create a new like a style file for your, back to the first question, right? When you create a new style file for React Native, it's a JavaScript file. Okay, it's not a CSS file. It's a JavaScript file. Okay, so just to be absolutely clear, there's no HTML and CSS involved in this, uh, in React Native at all. Okay, it's just inheriting a lot of similarities from HTML and CSS. Okay. Okay, so I hope that helps answers the question, helps answer the question. All right, I can see that. Yeah, thanks, Sean and Marcus, for taking on the, for helping to answer those for posterity, right? So that people, when they browse through the workshop, uh, when they browse through the channel later, right, then they can, uh, then they can at least uh, refer to it. Okay. All right. Okay, thanks everyone. Uh, let's let's continue. Let's continue. So what we're going to do next is I'm going to open up the second set of uh, lesson slides, which is uh, code exp one. I right? count from zero for some reason. Okay. Uh, so this one will be a very simple app. Anyone who's taken any of my courses before will know this. I will just have a button where you press it and the number goes up. Okay. Very simple app. All right, uh, with some different flavors so that uh, you're just going to learn a few different concepts about working with React Native, okay? So this is uh, an app that, you know, counts when clicked hours of fun, all right? And uh, that, again, I have a template for you. Again, I think the template's out of date, so I'm just going to paste the starter code for you instead, okay? Uh, it's the same starter code, actually. It's the same starter code. Yeah, it's the same starter code. All right, so actually, you know what? Just use the same starter code as before. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, uh, let's go ahead and create a basic clicker game. All right, so I'm going to go, once you're here, if you're here already, right, if you're done, you can actually click on uh, this thing over here and go back to my snacks. Okay, then you can go back to your snacks. Okay, so there's hello world and a hello world template. I'm going to create a new snack. This respectful mixed nuts, that's awesome. I should take a screenshot. Sorry. All right, let me just paste that into the into the Discord. That's such an awesome, awesome random name. Okay, anyway, um, let's change the name to uh clicker. All right, it's a it's a thing that you click. Okay, so I call it a clicker. Okay, and I'm going to paste in the starter code from Hello World. Hello import star as yep. Uh there we go. Right, where's my where's my paste? Where's my paste? Paste, sorry. Multiple monitors, very confused. Right. Ah, there we go. Okay, so I just wanted this. Okay, just wanted something to get started with, right? Uh this this thing's missing my text, but that's fine. Okay, it's good. So that's uh that's a start. Okay. So um what I'm going to do is I am going to get started on my little clicker app, right? And the way we are going to do that is I'm going to open my slides. Okay, where are my slides? All right, so I need a, I need a button, okay? And I need a number. That's, I think that's about it. Lah. 
Oh, I think that's about it. So I'm going to start by making adding a number a button. Okay, so to give myself a bit more space, I I'm not I'm going to need, need this left side of the screen. I'm going to turn off my files panel. Okay, and I'm going to import a button. Right, so import button. You have to go inside this chunk of things to import. Right, you can just add comma oops comma button. Okay, and now I'm going to have a button. Right, button title equals to press me exclamation mark slash button okay there you go it's a button press 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 okay very cool okay however this button over here has very limited uh very limited customizability lah. okay but uh before we move on i just want to point out something real quick all these import statements okay those of you coming from javascript you might be aware that there's a couple of ways to import and export in javascript okay so uh in react we're using this particular version i forgot the name of it okay but the web, what happens is that if you make a new file okay you can export default right when you do export default what it does is it will be the default thing that's imported right then you don't need curly braces when you import i can also export other things i can export export uh export uh const other thing equals to five okay and if someone else wants to export it from this file right they will say export curly brace other thing from app.js okay so that's the general idea behind this when over here we use a library so we just say react native if you want to export from another file like the question who was asked just now right what if you want to use uh your put all your styles in a separate file you would actually you refer to the file like you know styles.js okay so we'll we'll see this later on we'll see this later on okay but for now let's have this button actually do something so for this button to do something we're going to say on pressed okay on press equals to curly brace okay and i'm going to type in button pressed all right so this thing over here is a function that we're going to run remember you use it's in it's in javascript now so there's curly braces around it okay this is a function that we're going to run when this button is pressed where do i write this function i'm going to write it inside app function button pressed open curly brace close curly brace console.log wow why you press me ah? Uh? okay whatever you can put anything you want there okay so this part might be a bit confusing because you're like hey wait a minute we are in a function why you go and put a function in your function so you can functionally function okay the don't get don't worry too much about it you can put functions within functions within functions okay treat this as your overall container for your view okay so inside yes you can have a function if it really bothers you a lot right as long as it's not referring to anything inside here you can put this outside as well okay but i i just like to keep it inside here okay but this name over here must be the same as this thing over here and it must not have the open close bracket okay you are telling it you're passing it a variable of sorts okay so yes you can define this as a variable if you want all right but your variable for what function to run so if you press me press okay then you pull up your if you pull up your thing uh where's my editor my panel okay if you go to logs right then you will complain why you press me ah uh, okay so if i press one more time it will say why you press me ah uh, two which means that you will just do it a second time okay so it totally works right totally works okay so this these are some of the built-in properties of your button component right uh in react we like to call these things props okay instead of properties i don't know why save two syllables okay but uh yeah so and the way you define it is on press equals to followed by this thing okay you can probably imagine how i actually built this thing inside here correct you remember my example just now the set timeout if i don't want to give it a name if i'm never going to call button press anywhere else i could do this i could do open bracket close bracket fat arrow console.log press for what question mark question mark okay so if i do this then this button press is never used all right but now if i press this if i bring up my panel right, you say press for what all right so if i press it again you say press for what okay because now i have taken this entire functionality and put it inside my on press as a anonymous function so i did tell you we're going to use this a lot huh so I, that's why i mentioned it okay so 
you can of course call button press anything you want in this case, right? So you can also just get rid of it. Goodbye. Okay. All right, so far so good, right? We are just trying to put everything inside here. Let me save this so that we have something to refer to inside our, let me copy this and put it into Discord. Discord is here. Okay, so uh, my clicker project. Okay, right, so I put it into Discord. If anyone wants, you can load, load from there and refer to the code there, okay? All right, so that's logs. Okay, so now next we want to actually have it not, I mean, this is the, the aim of this thing is not to be root to the user, not that the user can see console.log. Huh? So those of you who are aware, you know that console.log, all these things when you print, the user cannot see, okay? But now we want to make it such that they can see something, all right? And this is the part where we introduce something called state, okay? Introduce something called state. So what we're going to do is we are going to put a number inside here Okay, and we are going to set it such that this number will increase every single time we press the button. Okay, so the way we do that is by this very strange looking format. Let count comma set count equals to use state bracket zero. I also realized that I forgot to import use state. So I'm going to say import uh, use state. Wait, no, 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 don't import star as react. Import use state from React. Okay, so this is new, right? I've added two lines. One line up here says import this thing called use state. Okay, if you want to, if you want to be very neat, uh, you want to make it make it follow a lot. Okay, uh, let's leave a space between the bracket. Okay, uh, can. okay. So import use state from React. All right, then down here, I use this function and I say let count comma set count equals to use state zero. This is the part where I need to introduce destructuring. Okay, destructuring. So what's happening here is that use state is a function from the React library that returns an array. Okay, hence the square brackets. Okay, so what does it return? It actually returns this, right? It returns something called a count array. All right, and count array zero is actually a variable, a state variable called count. Okay. And count array square bracket one is a function that will let you set count. Okay. So far, so good. Now, I could have done this. I could have said let count array equals to use state bracket zero. Okay. And then later on, I can use count away square bracket zero and count array square bracket one. Or I could do this. I could say, uh, you know, let uh, count equals to count array square bracket zero. Let set count equals to count array square bracket one. Okay, so these were the lines I could have written, three lines. Okay, but instead I use this awesome JavaScript feature. Just to it a bit. Okay, I use this feature, which is called destructuring, which means that, hey, I know you give me an array. I'm going to take the first one and give it a name immediately. I'm going to use the second one and give it a name immediately. Okay. And now it works perfectly fine. Okay. So this is array destructuring. So imagine if you have an array that gives you five things and you know that these five things are in order. So you can say, let, you know, square bracket, item one, item two, item three, item four, item five equals to the result of it, it equals to that array and it will happily store them each one by one. Okay, that's called destructuring, right? You used to have some structure, then you've broken it apart into different things. This is very useful for us because we need these two things very soon, right? So first things first, I'm going to do this over here. This hello, I am going to change it to open curly brace. By the way, notice, uh, if, I put, if I select my word hello and I type open curly brace, it doesn't delete it. Uh, it actually surrounds it with curly brace and I'm going to put count inside, okay? Notice that now it's got this big zero on top. Not, not really big, right? Later we make it bigger, okay? So what this means is use state zero will create this new thing called a state variable, all right? And it will set it to zero, all right? And now inside here, I don't want to console log anymore. I just want to say set count bracket count plus one. Okay, so what's going on? Let's just check real quick. 
Wait, so hang on now. My computer is lagging. I might need to restart bef between before we start the afternoon session. Okay, so what's happening here is that we got these two things. We got count and set count here. Okay, and they are both set to be zero. Okay, so the first thing we do is for this text over here, we set it to display count. Then we set the button such that when the button is clicked, it will set count to be one more than what count was. Okay, and the end result of all this, if I press this, I have a number that increases, okay? Tons of fun, right? This is uh, very entertaining. This is something that you can play with for very, very long. Yes, okay, good. So this is a very simple interactive React Native app. Okay, it's a very, very simple React Native app. Now, you might be wondering, what in the world is going on? Why did you have to do it so troublesome? Why not just do it like this? Okay, so those of you who have, you know, you've thought through this, you're like, why, why can't I just do this? Huh? Let count equals to zero. Okay, that, you know what? Let's, uh, how about like this, right? I comment that out. Let count equals to zero. Then inside here, huh? I don't do this stupid thing. Huh? I just do, like this, I just home plus plus. Okay, this compiles. Logically, it works perfectly fine. Okay, logically it works like in your head, you're like, hmm, yeah, I created a variable called count. Every time I press the button, uh, it displays over here. Every time I press the button, I increase by one. Then you run your reactive app and literally nothing happens. What is going on? Okay. This has to do with the way React Native works. Okay. If anything needs to refresh the UI, okay, this is the UI, uh, the thing on screen. If anything needs to refresh the UI, you actually need to declare it as a state variable. All right? So if anything needs to refresh the UI, you need to declare it as a state variable or it's not going to refresh the UI. Right now, my count is probably like 40 over by now. I've been clicking nonstop. Okay? But it's not asking the UI to refresh. You need to declare it as a state variable using this method. Okay? In order for it to refresh. The other thing though is when you declare as a state variable, you cannot just do count plus plus. Okay, you need to use the special function that they give you to increment the count. Okay, you need to use a special function that they give you to increment the count. Instead of using count plus plus, you say set count to be count plus one. All right, and that will work. Okay, these are the rules. All right, these are the rules. If you want to work with React Native, you do need to follow these rules. So in general, anything that is going to update the UI, you have to create a state variable. How do you create a state variable? You need to import uState. You need to get back the stuff from uState. Usually it's one item followed by the setter, okay? And you give it an initial value over here. And finally, you use them inside your UI, all right? If you want to cheat, you don't want to start from zero, you want to start from one gazillion, also can. Right, also can, but that's that's on you, man. Okay, so that's the general idea behind use state and state variables. Okay, so I think it's uh, about time for me to take a water break, all right, and for you to take a toilet break or stand up, right? Remember, stand, stretch, you know, like, uh, you know, stretch your arms, uh, stretch your legs, stretch your head. I don't know. Okay, uh, we will resume in about five minutes time. All right, so if you have any questions, do let me know. I'm going to copy and paste this thing into the Discord as a checkpoint. Okay, so if you want, you can refer to it as well. All right, so code. Okay, so it's in the, it's already in the Discord. Right, so let me set a five-minute timer. We will resume soon. And uh yeah, any questions do let us know inside the inside the chat. Okay.
Oh, all right. Okay, all right. Let's continue. Okay. Okay, let's continue. We good, everyone? Okay, we have a bit more learning to be done, and uh, yeah, we also have a we also have a Kahoot ready for you to, uh, yeah, to try to win the prize. Let's go. Okay, uh, but first let me find my slides. Where are my slides? Okay, so the next thing I want to do right in this particular app is we want to add some uh, words of encouragement. Okay, again, if you've ever taken any of my classes, I do the exact same thing. Okay, so we're going to add some words of encouragement that text would show up after the user hits 10 clicks or 20 clicks. Or before that, you know what, let's give some style, right? So right now, our, our thing is not styled very well. So let's give it some styles. So I'm going to say text style equals to styles.countertext. And button, button, ah, okay, this is a problem. All right, I cannot style the button, okay? Button is really not very uh, stylable, okay? So let me style my text first, okay? So counter text, colon, uh, let's say font size uh, 40, uh, font weight, bold, comma, and oof, 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 hang on, autocomplete going crazy, All right? Font weight, bold, comma, and uh, what else can I do? Let's give it some padding. Padding uh, 20, perhaps. Okay, remember to add a comma after the last item. It's just good practice because, you know, you're going, you're going to add more stuff later on anyway. Okay, so that, that's not bad. Okay, but the button is thoroughly unstylable. Okay, I don't think I need to prove it to you. If I put style equals something and I try and apply a style, it will not do anything. Okay, so instead of using a button component, we're going to make something new called a touchable opacity. Okay, so there's a couple of new, uh, there's a, this touchable opacity is kind of like very similar to button, okay, but not quite the same, right? So let me just show you that, right? Just going to go over here, comma, ooh, let me just edit people, edit, okay? So comma, touchable opacity. Okay, so touchable opacity is kind of like a wrapper around something that you yourself make it look like a button. Okay, hope that makes sense. So let me show you real quick. So I'm going to put a touchable opacity. Okay, on press equals to same thing. I'm going to copy and paste this. Okay, the zoom zoom is really messing me up. Every, every time every time someone tries to come in, my my zoom my my entire my entire system hangs a bit. I blame zoom. Okay, so anyway, touchable opacity on press equals to this. Okay, and then this one I can set a style. Style equals to styles dot button. Okay, I, I still want to call it a button. All right, then I have a closing touchable opacity. All right, and inside here, I'm going to have a text style equals to styles dot button text. And then here I'm going to say press me add more, add more ease. Okay, add slash text. Okay, then I can press the prettier to reorganize everything. Okay, so uh, notice one thing that Prettier does is that it's like, hey, your touchable opacity are very long, okay? Don't put so many things on one line. Sure, yeah, you can put each of the props on a separate line to make it look better. Good, thank you. Thank you, Prettier. All right, Prettier is this little plugin. We'll install it later as well. All right, the, now this button looks awful right now, but it totally works, okay? You can press either the top or the bottom, right? And they will totally increase the number because what touchable opacity does, like I said, is a wrapper. Okay, it's not it's not like you know Dre or whatever, right? What who are rappers nowadays? I have no idea. I'm an old man. Okay, sorry people. All right, but touchable opacity is a wrapper, W R A P P E R. Okay, around something which we can designate as a button. Okay, so they're saying that hey, this text, this text right here, is a button. Okay, live with it. All right, so I'm gonna get rid of button. Goodbye. And once you do that, notice that there's some nice visual cues. Button is now faded. It's not used, right? You can get rid of it. it. doesn't matter if you import it, right? Okay. But now my button looks very miserable, right? So I need to actually style it. Okay. So let's style my button. So down here. So button, I'm going to say button, colon, curly brace, comma, button text. They must style them separately, huh? right? The button is the container. So the button, the container, let's give it some padding. Give it a padding of 10 and a background color background color of red perhaps okay and of course i forgot a uh, comma so there it is panicking is like ah how come unexpected token 
Okay, no, no, I just press comma, can already. Okay, so E, that doesn't look very good. So let's go change the button text to color colon white. This, all these properties, right, you might be like, what in the world, how to remember all these stupid properties? If you've done CSS, if you're familiar with CSS, they should be fine. If not, you can just look them up. There's a, there are reference pages out there. Okay, I think I link to them somewhere. Okay, so uh, what else? I want some rounded corners to make it look, uh, there's corner radius, I think, or border radius, sorry. Right, autocomplete is pretty useful for these kind of things. Border radius of 20, right, and it will have a nice little border radius. Okay, so there we go. That looks pretty decent. Okay, so that's touchable opacity. It's a way of making something into a button. All right, good. Okay, so that's the idea behind this, all right? Uh, you can, of course, add other stuff. You can add an image and make it into a button if you want. You just replace this thing with an image. You put a cat there, then you press the cat, then you increase the number. Sure, don't press cats, not very nice. Okay, so um, yeah, that's, uh, that's that, all right? So that's the nice customizable button, all right? Uh, what else can I do? Oh, now let me just show you more properties, I guess. Let's uh, add, I guess, what else can I do? Font weight, font color, yeah. Okay, not much I can add. Okay, I'm done with uh, I'm done with this uh, this part. Now let's go add the encouraging message. Okay, so if you want to add a message that only shows up if it is uh, if the user has pressed the button more than ten times. Okay, what you need to do is you need to create the item first. Okay, and you need to have that item decide to show something only under a certain condition, which means an if statement. Okay, let me show you what that means. So let me go here, scroll up. Okay, so now I'm going to have another text down here. I'm going to say text style equals to styles.encouraging text. Okay, so you just give all these like stupid names. Huh? And then right now I'll leave it blank. Okay, because if you leave it blank, it doesn't take up any space. Right, you, you see this, it does, it's all still center aligned as though this thing doesn't exist, which it doesn't. Okay, so what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to put this inside a function. So let me show you a okay, function, all right? Show encouraging text, open bracket, close bracket, curly brace. And I'm gonna say, if the count is greater than or equals to 10, then I will return, keep going. Okay, so this part I hope makes sense to everyone, right? It's just a function which returns keep going, all right? If the count is greater than 10. So inside here, inside this thing, I'm going to call this function. And the way I call this function is I need to switch over to JSX from, I'm going to switch over from JSX to JavaScript. So curly brace, show encouraging text, open bracket, close bracket. This one you need the open bracket, close bracket. Okay, because you're actually running the function. Okay, so this means that every time it renders a screen, it will run this function. It's not very efficient, but who cares? Okay, it's decent enough and also I'm trying to prove a point, right? So I'm just trying to show you that, you know, you can render things conditionally. Okay, so if I click on this, don't have. Click on this, don't have. Click on this, don't have. Okay, never mind. I click all the way to nine first, right? When I click on this one more time, the next time that it re-renders the screen, because it's going to re-render the screen every time counter updates, okay? Every time, it re once it re-renders the screen, it will try and run this function and you realize that, oh, suddenly inside here, I've got text. Suddenly inside here, got the words keep going. Wow. Okay, I should put it on screen. All right, so I run this. Oh, keep going. Wow, not bad. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. This is called conditional rendering. Okay, the idea here is that you only put something on screen under a certain condition. And it might be a bit confusing because just now I said, you know, on press equals to the curly brace plus the function name and you don't put the brackets inside. In this case, you do put the brackets inside because you do want it to evaluate every single render. Okay, all right. So I think this is a good checkpoint for us to uh, for me to press save. Okay, unfortunately, when I press save, uh, this means that the people who are watching the video, if you go to my URL inside the Discord chat, uh, you only get the latest version. So I'm gonna kind of take a snapshot of this and put it into Discord. Okay, so where's my where's my Discord? Okay. Oh, can we use the ternary operator? Yes. Yes, you can. All right. That's a very good. That's a very good point. Okay. So let me let me uh thank you to uh, Niaz. All right. So let me just uh let me just demo that real quick. 
Okay, great question. Can we use a ternary operator? Yes, yes, you can, right? So the ternary operator, for those of you who know or might have forgotten, right, because you don't see it very often, is something that will uh, let you decide whether or not to show something on screen, okay? So one way is, okay, like, you could use the ternary operator inside here, but that's not much fun, okay? How about if I do the thing where I just remove this function entirely? Let's do that. So I remove this function, and down here, I could run the ternary operator as follows. I could say count greater than or equals to 10, question mark, right? If it is, say keep going. If it's not, I just return nothing. I'm trying to return, try return now. I think I just return now. Okay, so now means there's absolutely nothing. Like. You can return the empty string if you want, right? You can return empty string also, okay? But uh, either way is fine. Okay, so this is over here a one line if statement. Right, so yes, thank you for the reminder. I think I have this in the slides man, much later on, but this is a great time to introduce it. Okay, so ternary operator is essentially a one-liner if statement. It makes you feel very clever for using it. So well done. All right, so what it means is that if this is true, right, then it's a question mark, right? If it's true, go to the first thing before the colon, right? That's what gets returned. If it's false, go to the thing after the colon. That's what gets returned. Okay, so those of you who are used to things like Excel, right, you know the if statement in Excel, right? It's a lot like, if something comma, something comma, right? It's the condition, value if true, value if false. Okay, so yes, this is fantastic. Let's keep this version, I like it. Right, let's prove that it works also. Yeah, works, thank you so much. Okay, so good stuff. That's a excellent suggestion, thank you so much. All right, so that's the ternary operator. Let's continue a bit more with this, all right? And my aim is to finish this mini project, get you all started on installing your own version of Expo. Okay, and then afternoon we continue with more stuff. Okay, but afternoon I will not use Expo stack anymore. I will use uh, Visual Studio Code. Okay. Okay, come. Next thing I want to do is how to create components. All right. So let me just show you my slide for why I want to do this. Slides, 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 slides. I have moved past a lot of slides. Okay, here. All right. What if you want to show many updating counters? Okay. All right, you could do that fairly easily, right? You could do that fairly easily by having your same state variable in many different places styled differently, okay? But it's a bit of a, it's not so good, lah, right? Because it's going to be repeated code. So I think we want to try and make it into nice little functions, right? That we can use, okay? So let's do that. It's as though you want to make this into a function that you can reuse. And it literally is a function because it's going to be a function, but it's going to be a component, right? The idea here is that you don't want to repeat your code, okay? Uh, it's on my next slide, actually. You don't want to repeat your code, okay? So someone, some coding instructor I mentioned to you before when you first started loading programming, don't repeat code, okay? Because not so good, right? If you want to change it in one place, you're changing it in multiple places, okay? So uh, it would be nice to have a function which encapsulates everything about the counter, but you can actually customize it. You know how functions work, right? Functions can take in different arguments and or parameters, if, depending on which side you're calling from, okay? Uh, they can change between each instance, right? The color, size, and text, okay? So let's do that, right? Let's do that. So we're going to do it something like this. We're going to say counter text, color equals to light gray, font size equals to 10, then you put count. Color equals to light blue, font size equals 30, then another 60, another 90. Wow, not bad. Okay, so this is going to bring us into creating our own components, right? So let's get started doing this. Okay, so the first thing we want to do when we do this is we want to create a brand new file. All right, so when you do that, you need the, they need the left side menu. If you close it like me, the way you get back is go to editor, files, all right? And then you are going to have to create a new file. To create a new file, you press on this uh, document with a plus button on it, all right? And you name it counter text.js, okay? This is your chance to learn about importing and stuff like that, okay? So now there's a bunch of code to type out, which I will not make you do. I think I have it somewhere. Let me just uh, paste it inside here. Okay, here we go. All right, so this is your, this is the starter code, all right? And let me just uh, save it real quick, all right? This is counter text.js, okay? Unfortunately, your preview, right? Your preview is always good, not it's not going to be counter text or JS. Okay. So it's not as though you can design it and look at it in the editor without actually switching over to that screen. Okay. So, but don't worry, we'll uh, we will we'll get you to figure it out in a moment. Okay. So uh this is a brand new component that you can use. All right, let me give you this code. Give you this code inside here. Okay, so 
uh, let me put it into the, let me see, where should I put it? Ah, never mind. I'll put it, I'll put it into the main thread, okay? So starter code for counter text.js. Give me a moment now. Uh, I'm typing this on my other screen. Okay, it's now inside the Discord, right? Which you can see over here. Okay. All right. So feel free to make your own counter text.js and dump stuff inside there. Dump. Okay. And I'll explain what's going on. There's a lot of stuff going on. It seems seems super weird. All right. But I think the key thing right now is you want to see what it actually looks like. Okay. So to see what it looks like is we are going to uh okay. Actually, I made a mistake. This counter text.js, I think better to put inside components. Okay. So if you want to follow along exactly, yeah, please make sure that your counter text is inside the components folder, right? Because it's a nice way to organize stuff. Which brings me to another point, right? I'm very easily distracted. But this brings me to the point that your React Native project has no fixed structure. Okay. It's not quite like let's say Flutter or some other, like I think Android, uh, Android Studio, right? Okay, uh, where the file structure really makes a quite a difference. Okay. So you have to come up with your own system and people have kind of like settled on, okay, there's one for assets, there's one for components, uh, there might be other stuff as well, okay? But it's up to you, right? As long as there's an app.js and a package.json, everyone is happy, all right? You can dump all your stuff in the root folder. It'll be super disgusting and very hard to manage, but you do you, man. Okay, so that's that's the way you, uh, that's what I needed to tell you about uh, your file management, okay? So now let's go back to app.js. Okay, I need to import this new component. How do I import this new component? Let me show you. All right. Import counter text from. Okay. And this part is a bit tricky. If you've never worked with Unix file systems and stuff like that, you need to do dot slash components. Okay, there's a nice autocomplete. You can actually use the autocomplete. Counter text. You can either put counter text or counter text.js. Either way is fine. Okay, so. What this does is it will go find this file. What is dot? Dot means the same folder, right? The same folder as yourself, okay? So app.js is in this folder. It goes into this components folder, dot slash, okay? And it asks inside, hey, inside here got counter text or not? Yes, it found a counter text.js file, okay? It imported counter text. How did it find this counter text? Because that's the default export over here, okay? It's the default export. So in app.js, I could just import it. All right. Now let's try putting it on screen. Okay, let's try putting it on screen. So I'm going to go down here, right inside here. I'm going to say counter text. Okay. And uh, I need to go and check how, how to use counter text. Counter text, okay, has a bunch of props. Okay. Props.color, props.font size, and props.children. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to use it. So, oof, sorry, sorry. My scroll, expo scrolling is a bit weird. So I don't know where my mouse is. Okay, there it is. Counter text, props. No, not props. Counter text, color equals to green. Font size equals to 10. And inside here, I'll put count slash counter text. Okay, so now I have a little green counter text over there. Let me just uh readjust my sizes a little bit so you can see. Can I, can I, can't, I can't adjust this font size. Okay, never mind. Okay, I can't adjust the window sizes anywhere, so this is useless. All right, but let me just turn down my font size a bit. Okay, so I added two lines to this. Okay, I added this thing, which is something I wanted to highlight, which is how to import stuff. Okay, so I import counter text from dot slash components slash counter text. Okay, that's one. Next, I used counter text, okay? Because I have this little component, now I can use it. Just like how I imported touchable opacity and now I can use it, okay? And counter text has a few props. It's got color equals to green, font size equals to 10. Remember that 10 is a JavaScript number, so you have to fall back to JavaScript. And inside here, I pass in the count, okay? And now it's got this little green thing over here, very cute, all right? So let's go make another one, copy, paste, all right? So if I don't want this to be green, I can have a, there are various colors over here. They're all like well-defined colors. You can use orange, okay? And this can be 20, okay? Now I can have even more, right? I can have a, I don't know. I think there's one called hot pink. Nice, all right? So this can be 40, okay? So you can do all kinds of nonsense with this, right? And the great thing about it is that 
it's very easy to make new ones of these, okay? Because you just say, hey, counter text, I want a version that's green. I want a version with font size 10. Inside, what do I want? Okay, you can put other stuff inside here. You can put the, this is small. This is medium. And this is large. Okay, then, you know, when you press, 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 everything will increment because they're all tied to this little count variable. Okay. All right, so, so far so good. Any questions on this? Let's pause a moment to make sure that everyone has. Okay, so once again, if you need the counter text, the counter text is inside your here. Okay, hang on. My, my computer is struggling a little bit. I'm not sure what's going on, right? So I'm, I'm kind of breaking up. Okay, all right. Hopefully this is fine in the... Okay, not sure what's going on. Uh, this, sorry, my computer's uh, struggling a little bit. I'm not sure why, all right? Uh, but uh, yeah, it's okay. I'll restart before the afternoon, okay? All right, so let's uh, let's take some time to look at counter text, okay? Before I call it a day on this project, okay? Let's take a look at counter text before I call it a day on this project. This is the last last thing, last last feature we're adding, okay? So counter text JS looks like this, okay? And you might want to be able to make your own components in the future, so you this might be important to you, okay? So first of all, right, when you want to create a function, you do export default function counter text. Okay, by the way, oh, console.log props. Okay, let's go take a look at the console. All right, so hang on. Huh? Okay, so, all right. So notice that I have this little thing over here, right? Every time this thing renders, it will print out the props. Okay, so what are the props? The props are the things that you pass in from app.js. Okay, just now we passed in two things, right? Green and 10, followed by orange and 20. Followed by, oof, 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 sorry, the scroll is terrible on this thing. Hot pink and 40. Okay, so if I go back to counter text, right, when I do console.log props, you'll notice that, hey, I received all this stuff. Okay, I received all this stuff, right? Every time it renders, it will just uh, print it out. Okay, so it's a nice little thing you can do, right, if you just want to see what's going on. Okay, so it's not quite like your regular functions. You don't actually define the different things that it expects to receive, you just define all the props. Okay, and the props will just kind of show up. Okay, it's like you're inviting your friends to your house and you just say, ah, yeah, anyone come, lah. right? Then they bring the entire family along. Okay, then you deal with it. Okay, so that's how your React Native uh, components work. You pass all the props you want. Okay, and you can check what they are by using console.log. Right, so you can see, oh, I got them. I got them in a JSON object. Color, hot pink, font size 40, followed by children, right? Children is uh has this thing that says this is large and 22. Okay. I have no idea what 22 is, okay, but uh yeah, it's it's some stuff. Okay. It just uh, received uh, something. I believe this is the ID that refers to the count variable, if I'm not wrong. Okay, or 23. Okay. Oh no, so it's the value of the count variable. Okay, so it just received the value of the count variable. Okay, so once you receive these props, you can use them down here. Okay, but what's going on inside this style? Let me break down this style style thing for you. Okay, this style has multiple styles. Okay, so it takes on the basic text style first, right? the basic text style first, not textile. Okay, which is font weight bold. All right, so you can actually use this to kind of like define some basic font stuff. Like I can say font family, uh, Georgia. I think that should change the font. Yes, okay, good. All right, I don't think we have Comic Sans, but let's just try. No, no Comic Sans, very sad. All right, maybe Papyrus. Yes, Papyrus, awesome. Okay, so now my now my font is super ugly. All right, but notice that it takes the fonts from here, styles.txt, okay, as the first item in the array, followed by another JSON object. And this JSON object, is defined by the stuff that it was receiving from the props. Okay, so color is taken from props.color, font size is taken from props.font size. So it kind of merges all these different properties together to get your final property. Okay, so if I take away, for example, if I comment out this thing over here, right, then the font size has no effect. If I comment out this thing over here, 
then the color has no effect. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. So in theory, yes, you could have multiple styles and you just like put them all together, but your style now looks very complex. Okay, it's got a curly brace to switch from JSX to JavaScript. It's got a square bracket to denote a, an array. And it's got another curly brace for the inline style object that you've created. Okay, super gross. Uh, you'll get used to it. Lah. Okay, you'll get used to it. That's just how, how these things work. Okay, all right. So that's how we get this stuff to work. Now, what about the actual content? The content comes in props.children. Right, so you just okay. Look, props or children is really just something, right? If you just want to inherit the children, you take the children and then you put it inside some other component as its children. It's kind of like giving away your children. That sounds weird. All right, but once you do that, then you just take prop dot prop dot children and pass it off to someone else. Okay, that's really what's going on inside this kind of scary looking, uh, scary looking thing. I want to point out a very common mistake that happens to people when they pass props around, when they create their own components and they pass props around. The common mistake is as follows. For example, over here, all right, because, you know, we, we spell like the British, all right, we, we have our British ancestry, all right, our heritage and all that. Okay, so we spell in the British, we say color, okay? Color equals to green, okay? There's no error. Unlike just now where Expo was like, ah, oh, panic, you never give me all this. Oh, I cannot, I cannot. Right now there's no error. Okay, your thing just fails silently. Notice over here, this thing is no longer green. Okay, that's because you're now passing in a prop called color, right? C-O-L-O-U-R, okay? But your counter text is expecting a prop called color, C-O-L-O-R, okay? It can be very, very tricky in this. This, this error is can be very, very tricky to find. All right, is so that because it's not an error, right? It's a, it rather it's not a compile time error. There's nothing that will actually be able to stop it from happening. Okay, so yeah, when we, when Expo or React Native sees this, they're like, oh yeah, sure. There's a color prop. They just clearly don't want to use it. They just use another prop. Okay, so be very careful of this, right? When you're trying to check, that's why I put a console.log over here so that you can kind of like print out the stuff that you receive and hopefully that gives you a clue about what's going on. When you're done, you might want to remove it. Lah. Okay. All right. So that's uh, something to take note of. Okay. So just be, be careful of uh, misspelled, uh, misspelled props. Another common mistake is font size, lowercase s, right? Then it will just have no effect. Okay. This happens very often. Like your know, touchable opacity, a lot of people will do on press lowercase p. Okay. And Sometimes it's the experts that make this problem, make this mistake because on click in JavaScript, the JavaScript button on click is lowercase c. So ah, who knows? Okay, so I hope that kind of makes sense. Let me go pull these uh code into pull this code into the into the squad, right? So that we can, you have something to refer to. All right. So let me see. Okay, so I'm just going to say this is a checkpoint tree. Uh I probably should have named my checkpoints, but never mind. Right, this is uh, app.js colon JavaScript paste. Okay, and the other one is uh, counter text.js. Jeez. Why did I put Swift? Sorry. Sorry, I'm too used to. I'm too used to pasting Swift code inside here. Did I do that just now? All right, too late. Ah, forget it. All right, too bad. Okay, if I if I made any mistakes with the with the syntax highlighting, you know, bear with it. Okay, okay. Any questions? <clears throat> We're almost done with the morning's content. All right, I'm just going to go through uh how to install your own copy. Okay, where is my slides? From 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 there. Okay, so. So we've covered state variables, we've covered creating components, we've covered uh, props, we've covered you know, touchable opacity, uh, importing, a lot of stuff. Huh? I, I, if you feel a bit lost, if you feel a bit like uh, you didn't manage to digest all that, right? don't panic. We will put up the videos, you can watch it at your own speed, or you can watch a Udemy course where they probably go through it in a bit more you know, uh, friendly manner. Like this is hackathon, this is like throw as much information as you as possible, okay? All right, so uh, I hope that's okay for everyone. All right, so let's uh, let's install Expo. 
Okay. For this one, hmm, let me see if I can let me see if I can pull up my other computer because I have another computer where I haven't installed it. And I think it'd be nice for me to show you, you know, like uh show you that computer running running stuff. Okay, so give me a moment. Let me get that set up and see whether we can use that computer. Right. I'm going to I'm going to be a bit confused because I'll be uh I'll be on a separate monitor VNCing into another computer. Uh, I, I'm gonna be a bit confused, but you know, you, you're you're okay, right? Okay. So give me a moment. Let me uh hide this and let me hide this and let me VNC into my other computer, which I don't know what the name of the computer is. Hang on. Uh. Okay, I think that works. Great. All right. Please don't steal my password. Okay, great. Excellent. Now I have a screen within a screen within a screen. Okay. Um. So let's get started. Actually, uh, installing. Wait, which mouse should I use? Okay, I should use. I should use this mouse to full screen this. I think. This looks weird, but it will do. Okay. Um. So, you know what? Yeah. Okay. This is fine. All right. So, uh, what I need to do now is I want to install. Uh, install. Let's let's set my default browser to Safari real quick. Okay, so I'm going to install Expo, right? So that's Unity. That's another course that we are running separately. I'm very, I'm, I'm, I'm just very confused in general. Okay, but uh, if you want to install Expo and run it locally, right? So that you don't need to actually go through all that stuff of, you know, going to a website and, you know, clicking through and things. You might be happy with Visual Studio Code, which I think many people enjoy using, okay? Here's what you can do, right? First things first, you need to install Node.js, right? So you need to go to Node.js, search for Node.js, Yes, and install it. Right, so all these instructions are in the slides. Right, so don't worry too much. Okay, you need to download the LTS version. Right, the, that's the long term support version. Okay, so once you download it, download, download, download. Okay, what you can do is you can just run it to install it. Okay, I'm pretty certain that I've never installed it on this computer, so this is a great chance to show you everything from scratch. Unfortunately, I my Windows computer is in the other room. Um, I don't think I need to show you on Windows. Maybe if I have time, okay, I can go and turn it on. All right, so let me press agree. Okay, press install. Okay, enter my password again. And we will install Node. Node is kind of like a runtime that lets JavaScript run outside the browser. Okay, that's a simpli simpli very simplistic way of thinking about it. Okay, so I'm done installing. Great, that's step one. Step two is I need to install Expo. So you need to use your terminal for this. Okay, so... Those of you who have never used a terminal, I'm not sure how many of you there are, right? You need to go to in on the Mac, you need to go to here, go to utilities and run the terminal. Okay. So when you do that, you get this little thing. Uh, I have some nice little color stuff going on on my terminal. You might or might not have that. Okay. If you want nice little color stuff on your terminal, you can go look for oh my zish. Okay. And follow the instructions there to get some nice little colory stuff, right? I, I know nice little colory stuff is very important to developers. Okay. Uh, but anyway, I've already done that. So I now I just need to install on the command line. Uh, and the way I do that is I need to use NPM to install Expo. So the way I do that is, uh, let me, let me just look it up. All right. So under docs. Okay. And, uh, get installation. Okay. So that's what I want to do. Okay. So I want the Expo CLI. CLI stands for Command Line Interface. Okay, so it tells me that, hey, you need Node, you need Git. Hmm. Okay, you should probably install Git if you don't have it. I think I already have Git. And Watchmen for Linux or Mac OS users. Okay, uh, recommended tools. We do want VS Code Editor and we do want the VS Code Expo extension. Uh, you can use PowerShell for Windows. Okay, so over here. All right, so let's see. Uh, how do I install? Blah, 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 blah. It doesn't actually tell me how to install the Expo CLI. Hang on. Uh, let's click on Expo CLI. All right. And it just tells me how to use it, which is nice. Uh, okay, let's just try. Okay. Oh, it's using NPX. Okay, okay. So we can type in NPX. Sorry, wrong keyboard. Expo dash H. Okay. And what that does is it gives you some, some things that it tells you, hey, you need to install Expo. Okay, sure. All right. Install Expo. Okay, so this will take a bit of time again. All right, it will. Uh, this is a good thing to do over the lunch break if you're joining us after lunch, because after lunch, I'm going to switch over to using uh, Expo on my computer. Right, 
not not this like computer within a computer, but uh, I'll use it on my on my uh, yeah bigger computer. All right. So what this does is it's just pulling in a whole bunch of packages, okay, so that you can run Expo. All right. At the same time, you know, let me go and check what else I needed to install because it did recommend I install Git, right? So Git is your version control, right? We maybe will have a chance to talk about what that is, right? But let me just check if I have Git. Yes, I do have Git. So if you don't have it, install Git. Uh, if you don't have Watchman, you should probably install Watchman. Let me go install Watchman uh, down here. You can just uh, Windows. I don't want Windows. Right, scroll down. Uh, I can use Homebrew. If hopefully you're familiar with Homebrew. All right. Uh, I'm just going to install Watchman as well. Right, so, okay. So this might be a whole bunch of stuff that might not be worth it. Right. Might not be worth it to do. Okay. I think you can follow most of the stuff that uh, most of this these few days things uh, without actually having to install it locally. But I think it's also useful to have someone to help you out, right? And if you have any questions, let us know in the chat. Okay, so installing, installing, installing. All right, installing, installing, <clears throat> installing, still installing. Okay, let me go check what else I need to install. Ah, wrong button. Okay, sorry. I have two keyboards, I'm very confused. Okay, so now here, <clears throat> All right, so yeah. Uh, once it's done, it'll tell you to do things like uh, npx install who am I and things like that. But let's wait for Watchman to finish installing first. It's taking a while. Let me just go over here. All right, I'm just going to type npx expo who am I. Right, it will say that, hey, you're not logged in. Okay, if you're not logged in, you can say npx expo login. Okay, you do need to log in in order for you to be able to do this, right? So I, I have my passwords, which I've forgotten. Uh, what, what was it called? Expo. Oh no, it didn't sync. Okay, wait, there it is, All right, Expo. Okay, so let me go copy my username, which is, I'm using a password manager. So uh, copy password, paste. Okay, so you log in for me. And of course, you do need to be online for all this. Okay, so now I am officially logged into Expo. Okay, so now, yes, that's me. All right. Finally, I can actually go ahead and go test out my test out my stuff. Okay, so. All right, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to go create a new folder. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to assume that this thing will finish at some point. All right, I'm going to head into my developer folder. And I'm going to say Expo init uh, demo project. Oh, oops, npx expo init demo project. Okay, I think my slides are, oh, I see. Okay, my slides are not using the latest, uh, the latest version of expo, right? Which means that the, which means that the commands are going to be a little bit different. Okay, so, the context for all this is that uh, npx is kind of like a kind of like a runner, right? It's like a special command that will help you run a whole bunch of other stuff, all right? Um, I might need to update the slides so that we can actually continue using these things, all right? But I'm just going to kind of adapt for the moment, right? Create expo app demo project, okay? So what this means is that uh, it's going to go create a new project for me. And it will install something very shortly. Okay. Okay. So this is, uh, of course, a bit more work than uh, getting just going to our Expo Snack website and just you know like doing whatever lah. Huh? But it will let you be able to run this locally. Okay. So we'll update the update the slides and to make sure that it works. Okay. So great, it works now. I have this demo project. I can see CD demo project. Okay. And if I just want to start it, I'll just run npm run web. Okay, so that will actually start the web version of it. Whoa, okay. Uh, da, 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 da. I need to install a, I need to install a bunch of stuff. Right, this is always a little bit annoying. I'm gonna copy this, paste this. Okay, so it still needs to install a bunch of stuff, all right, before it can work. All right, so see if you can try it out, right? If you have any, if you have any troubles, do let us know. Yeah, okay, install. All right, okay. So it's good that I showed you this on a new computer because you know at least uh, I think my current computer is all set up, but uh, the new one is not. Okay, so it's installing a bunch of stuff, and on this side, it's installing a bunch of stuff. Uh, that install, install, install. 
Okay, but the end goal of all this is so that we can actually preview it on our computer rather than using Expo Snack. Why would you want to do that? There are a few things that you cannot do on Expo Snack. Mm. Work collaboratively, okay, because you're in a hackathon, you might need to work with your friends. Uh, Expo Snack, last I checked, does not sync to GitHub. Let me just check again later, all right? Um, so it might be hard for you to work with one another. Okay, so that's one. All right, so that's uh that's npm run web one more time. Finally, okay. So what it does is it will create a it will create a new thing, right? And there you go. This is my app. Okay, it's a bit ridiculous because it's so it's so large. Okay, so I want to pull it out and maybe uh you know force it to one side of the screen or something, you know, then it will look a little bit more like your regular web regular app. Okay, so now over here, what I want to do is I want to run Visual Studio Code. Okay, so I don't have Visual Studio Code. Do I have Visual Studio Code? I do. I did not install the command line interface. Okay, so let me just close this project. Uh, oops. So Visual Studio Code, I'm going to file open and I'm just going to open this particular new thing that I've created. So down here, I go to developer and I'm going to go to open up demo project, press enter. All right, and there you go. Do you trust the authors of the file and folder? Of course I do, it's me. All right, so yes, I trust the authors and down here. Okay, so now I can like kind of set up my development environment so that I have Visual Studio Code on one side and my app.js is here. The good news is that everything else should be fairly straightforward. Okay, so uh, let me just uh, delete away this thing, All right? The hello world. Okay, so press save, All right? And there you go, hello world. Okay, so that might have been a bit much, right? If you are not used to the command line, if you're not used to installing stuff on the command line and setting things up, I skipped past the whole part where you install Visual Studio, uh, Visual Studio Code. But I think if you're okay with it, then uh, please try it out. Okay, I want to emphasize one more time, none of this is super essential for the qualifiers. Okay, the qualifiers coming up this week, on Friday, they'll give you the details, but it is almost certain that you don't even need to touch code. Okay, I'll give you that as a hint for staying with me throughout these three hours. Okay, the qualifiers are going to be more about your design and idea and things like that. So if you don't know React Native perfectly by this Friday when they launch the qualifiers, it is fine. All right, if you don't have Visual Studio Code set up, all that, it's perfectly fine. Okay, so I just wanted to mention that real quick. All right, but... This is my React Native uh, app running, okay? Uh, there are other options just now. You might have seen there was, uh, you know, there was telling me that, hey, you could also NPM run, uh, oops, you could also NPM run iOS and stuff like that. That will launch the iOS simulator, okay? And similarly for Android, it will launch the Android simulator for you. Run it on an Android phone as well, okay? Or you can scan this QR code with Expo Go. Then you can actually uh, try it out on your mobile device, okay? But I hope that I've shown you how to get started with the desktop install. Okay, any questions? All right, so I'm going to, uh, I guess, switch back to another computer. Put this computer to one side. Uh, switch back to this computer. All right, pull up Discord, check for any questions. Everything okay? Anyone, anyone got questions? Luke has a question. Yeah, please keep, please keep going. Sorry, I, I call your name. Don't, don't panic. Okay, so I think we are done in terms of the content. I have, like I mentioned, we do have a little Kahoot quiz for you if you want to hang around and just do it. It's a, it, is, it is very strange. Okay, there are some strange questions inside there. I warn you first. Um, the good news is the winner of that Kahoot quiz will receive a prize. Okay, uh, and yeah, it's a completely irrelevant price. It's just something that we, we asked the SDA, can we give this as a price? They're like, okay. And then we're like, it's not super relevant. Okay. Uh, Luke has a question that says, we're using React Native to build mobile apps or using NPM run iOS or web. Or, oh, okay. So the preview, if you do NPM run web, it will open up the preview on the, it will just open up the preview on the website. Okay, which I find easier to deal with than opening up the preview on the iOS simulator. Okay, so the iOS simulator, if you want the iOS simulator, I have the iOS simulator, okay. Oops, I have two iOS simulators, as you can see. I have iOS, I have iOS simulator on my on both machines, okay. Uh, if you want the iOS simulator, you need to install Xcode. Xcode is about 10 to 20 gigabytes. It's not much fun to install. Also, the simulator loves to eat your CPU, okay. So you can run it on the simulator. You can run it, you can preview it on your device. You can preview it anywhere you want. You can preview it on Android, okay. But... I prefer working on the web, 
right? Because it's cross-platform, it means that whatever I have over here, okay, it's really just going to look all more or less the same. Okay, so this thing, this NPM run iOS, NPM run web, NPM run Android, these are all just how you want to preview your app. And I find that the easiest way to work on it, as the easiest way to preview as you're working on things is probably the web version. Okay, same for Expo Stack. All right, hope that answers your question. All right, thanks. Let me switch back to this computer. I'm very confused. Which computer am I on? Oh, I'm on this computer. Okay, uh, follow-up question. Uh, when sizing with CSS with like width and height, to some extent, I would say, I guess to some extent, uh, there might be, okay. But since it's flexbox, right, you're, you're hopefully try to make it such that it's flexible to the layout. Lah. Okay, All right, hopefully try to make it such that it's flexible to the layout, if that makes sense. Okay, so if you're trying to make sure that it's pixel perfect, absolutely pixel perfect, stick with one, okay, because again, another hint for those of you who are sticking it with, out with me, uh, because you're not going to submit your entire app. Okay, you're not going to submit your entire app. We're not going to take it and test it on all three devices. We are just going to see what you've made, which means that you will have a chance to show off what you've made using some kind of method, right? You might want to record it on the iOS device. You might want to record it on the web preview. Mm, up to you. Okay, so I hope that helps answer the question. Okay. Uh, all right, so let's, uh, let's just do a little quiz and we can call it a day, okay? All right, so... Uh, let me pull up my quiz over here. I don't think I have sound, which is a bit sad. So please join us. Uh, when you do join us, please use your real name so that I can hunt you down later to give you a prize. All right. But uh, yeah, it's not going to take more than 10 minutes and we will call it a day from there. Okay. And I'll see you again at 1.30 at a separate link. Don't join back this link. Huh? 1.30 at a separate link. Okay. So please join us for Code EXP Day 1 AM Quiz. Okay, all right. Whoa, 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 all right. Okay, you have another 20 seconds to join. 20 seconds if you'd like to join. Uh, there are Kahoot's at the end of every half day session if you are with, aiming to win our mystery prize. Our mystery prize is very mysterious. I'll reveal it at some time, eventually, maybe. Okay, all right, you have 10 seconds. Four, three, two, one. All right, if you still want to join, the code will be in the bottom left-hand corner. Let's go. Hmm. Okay, this will be based on stuff that I have mentioned in class. Hopefully, I might have forgotten to mention some of these things. Okay, never mind. All right. Please don't take this quiz too seriously. All right, multi-select. All right, which of these is not a cross-development, cross-platform, sorry, not cross-development, cross-platform app development uh, framework? Okay. Which of these is not a cross-platform app development framework? HTML, CSS, React Native, SwiftUI, or Python? Okay, yeah, I would argue that uh, Python is not. Uh, Python does offer a cross-platform app development framework, maybe, perhaps. Uh, this one, it is, la, HTML is, la, right? It is cross it is cross platform, okay? So yes, you can use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript for this, okay? All right, okay. Sorry if I scammed anyone. All right, let's keep going. Well done to Jihoon. Okay, let's keep going. Which of these are advantages of using a cross, oh my goodness, cross development app framework? Okay, I, I don't know what I was thinking, all right? So I'm very tired. Okay, so native app development can be manpower intensive or no need to worry about the latest features, lol or the app can be used on more than one device allowing for rapid development, or there are no advantages. I hate JavaScript.
Okay, so I think, yep, so native file development can be quite manpower intensive, right? Imagine if, you know, you really, okay, like maybe not for hackathon, right? Because you only need to demo it. But if you're going out to market, you're trying to have an iOS app and an Android app, you need twice the team, right? Twice the size of a team, okay? Yeah, same for similar idea as this, okay? Who chose, who chose blue? Okay, all right, never mind. All right, well done to Webic. Which of these are advantages in doing platform native? app development that means you actually just stick to one platform okay which you can for this hackathon you totally can right if you just you know if you enjoy swift as much as i know some people do right they can uh, you can totally just make a ios app right because we're not going to we're not going to test it out on an android device and say uh not, not compatible cannot okay all right, so yes, uh, these two, right? Easier to stay up to date with the latest SDKs, right? So who knows, man? The WWDC is tonight. If any, if they announce something cool, you can you can use it in your hackathon, man. Okay, so your code is more likely to be optimized for the platform, which is true. All right. Okay. All right. Waybeck is still on top. I hope hopefully I'm getting your name right. What coding languages do native app development platforms not use? What coding languages do native app development frameworks not use? Okay, yep. Uh, Android is not a not, not a language. Okay, but uh, wait, wait a minute. Did I forget to choose that as an answer? All right, sorry. Oh no, sorry. That that was absolutely answer. Sorry, I, I made a mistake. All right. Okay, never mind. Sorry, ignore that happened. All right, I'm, I apologize. Once again, all these, these things are riddled with mistakes. So I warn you first. Okay, in this hackathon, you can use whatever framework you're most familiar with. Is it true or false? Is it true, 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 but in yellow or false? Okay, well done, All right? It's true. Who's who's it false? Excuse me. Okay. All right, let's keep going. Webic and Jihoon are still on top. What are the names of the official Apple and Google developer conferences? I've mentioned this in class, I think. Okay, all right. Yes, it's a uh, WWDC and Google I/O. All right, it's not. It's not this. Okay, never mind. All right, next. <clears throat> okay. What is the name of the web-based React Native IDE that we're using? Okay, the web-based React Native IDE that we're using. Okay, it's Expo Snack. All right, it's not Expo Native. Nice try. Okay. Next. Oh, Jihoon's all the way up there. Well done. Which of these are React Native view components? Okay, which of these will you put in brackets and then put them onto a screen, a React Native screen? Okay, it's view and text button is not because it's lowercase, you need capital B button. Okay, it is case sensitive, be careful. All right, sorry to sorry to scam some of you. Oh, John Gabriel, well done. All right, let's keep going. Okay, which of these are valid JavaScript operators or comparators? Okay, this one's a... Uh, I don't think I actually mentioned all the possibilities, but uh, how do you compare in JavaScript? Is it or do stuff in JavaScript? Which of these are valid? Those of you who've seen some JavaScript, done some JavaScript will probably know, I think. Okay, equals is totally valid. Equals, equals, you probably know comparing. Equals, equals, equals is the non-horrible non, non comparison that people like to use in JavaScript because equals equals will tell you certain things that are just flat out wrong. Uh, there's no quadruple equal as far as I know. Okay, if there is, please let me know. I could be wrong. All right, well done to Weishen. What is the name of the hook we use to store data that can be updated on the screen? Is it use variable, var, use state, or state var? 
Okay, so all these things are, these are called hooks. Okay, hooks, right? They will start with, uh, and I guess I shouldn't give it away, but never mind one second left. They will all start with use. Okay, so use state means uh, you have something that uses state, right? Then you'll see a few more use state on there's a, yeah, use effect, especially. Okay, let's keep going. Well done, Weishen is still on top. What is the name of the language used in React Native to display items on screen? All right, is it XML, JSX, HTML, or English law? Okay, yeah, so it's JSX. Okay, it's not quite HTML, right? It's not quite HTML. It wouldn't actually be classified. Who, who chose English? Okay, anyway, next. Okay, third last question. Which of these are valid style properties in React Native, right? The things that you put inside the styles. Is it flex, padding top, background color, or font bigness? Okay, the answers are flex and background color. Okay, padding top is not because it's got a dash in between. Okay, if you wanted to use it in React Native, it would be padding capital T top. Okay, all right. Oh, no change at the top. Well done. Consistency. All right, multi select. Which of these props have we seen so far that we, which of these are props that we have seen so far? Okay, sorry, my grammar not very good. Or is it styles equals on press equals or title equals or green is wrong don't choose green okay we've seen on press and title we have not seen styles it's style it's singular right if you put styles you will not have any styles and you will be very confused Okay, so this will trip someone up, right? If they're putting style, they'll put styles and they'll, they'll be like, how come none of my styles are showing up? How come, how come, how come? Right, uh, yeah, it's very hard to find, right? And there's no mistake. Okay, last question. Last question is very difficult. What was the name of a randomly generated expo snack in the lesson? I'm sorry for those of you who joined late or missed that segment. Okay, the answer is disrespectful mixed nuts. All right, congratulations to the winner. Who's the winner or who are the winners? Okay, YC, well done. John Gabriel and on top is Weixian, well done. Congratulations, everyone. And just like that, we are just in time. Uh, if you're joining us in the afternoon, I'll see you at 1.30 at a separate link. Please head over to the links in Discord to find out where to go. If you have any other questions, please let us know in Discord and uh, I'll see you afterwards. Okay, see you again. See you again. Expo installed. All right, thanks, everyone. See you later. Bye.